National Championship in 1984 with a very strong team this year, number 14 in the country. They travel to Houston playing just its second game of the season and one of the best quarterbacks in college football, the most accurate one, Zach Wilson of BYU, will have the ball second. Houston will get the ball as we get underway from H-Town. With Chris Button and Andre Ware, Jason Benetti along with you, and Houston will get it first. One of the most dangerous kick return men in the country. Walfrey won't have a chance. Marquez Stevenson will not see the ball as Houston will have it first. Welcome to our homes. Jason Benetti, Andre Ware, Chris Button is down on the sideline. What do you make of this BYU team historically at 4-0 right now? You watched him play a lot in the, in the 80s and 90s when you were playing. Yeah, they. Uh, this is one of the more talented teams that they've had, both on both sides of the ball. They're good on special teams. I think that the uh, the country, their fans, going to get a treat tonight. We can get a chance to see Zach Wilson, the, uh, an outstanding young quarterback that has all the tools to to do it on the next level. His counterpart, Clayton Toon, is a junior who started off and on in his time at Houston, but it is his job now as he fires a bullet over the middle, and that is Stevenson for a first down. Yeah, not wasting time getting Stevenson involved in this game, and this is going to be a common theme for the Cougars of Houston all night long. He is a playmaker. He is a guy that when he has the football, you're holding your breath, uh, waiting what's going to happen. His coach has told him this week, you don't have to be Superman against a defense that'll give you the middle of the field as Kyle Porter has the run for Houston against a BYU defense that's very stout but playing without its best defensive lineman, Kyrus Tonga, tonight. Yeah, I'd like to see Kyle Porter get more carries. I think he gets better as the game progresses. They, they use a lot of different backs, and, and it's just an opportunity, I think, against BYU to really get him going. It's a defense that is going to dare you to run the full football against them. And Cal Porter, I think, is uh, could be an answer for, for the, the Cougars of Houston tonight. Right down the middle, Christian Trahan is tight end and a first down for the Houston Cougars. Trahan was their player of the game last week despite only having one catch. Well, you see with the play action, when you run the football and you come back with play action, the linebackers biting up to help out on the run, and it allows Trahan right in the crease behind him before the safeties. Houston will alternate pace. Sometimes and they'll go they, fast, sometimes they'll slow it down, Andre. Yeah, right now, they're just slowing it down now, but they started this game in, in their uh, NASCAR-type speed, really pushing the pedal. They got the restrictor plate on now. On first down, it is Porter, but this drive looks so much better than their whole first quarter last week against Tulane. Yeah, a couple of early turnovers in the first half, and they were playing uphill, but got things together to the tune of 49 points. So they can score. They can score in a hurry. They will challenge you defensively, and this is a game where Clayton Toon's going to have to show his patience against this BYU zone. Why so? Because you're, they're going to force you to check it down. They're not going to give you anything over the top tonight. So they run it. It's Porter, and he is stacked up by Isaiah Kafusi, the veteran senior, one of the leaders on this defensive side. And one and a defense, just to kind of put a bow on that, they want to keep everything in front of them. They've got big, long, athletic linebackers that make it tough to throw in the zone coverage. They can bring them off the edge when need be. But it's, it's a defensive look, this two deep cover two that's going to force you to check the ball down a lot and test the patience of Toon. They rush three. A linebacker came late, and Toon goes off the left side, and it is caught for a first down for Keith Corbin. Yeah, he's an excellent route runner and knows and has a good feel for, for holes within the zone. And you see him there work back towards his quarterback, so one of those linebackers dropping underneath can't get between him and the football. Porter one more time, cuts it up the middle and gets stacked up immediately. That was Peyton Wilgar, whose father played at BYU as well, and it's second down. And they'll play bend but don't break. By that, you know, you're going to get some chunk plays early in the game as they try to iron things out on defense, but then they get down here, those... The windows get smaller. 
it's tough to throw the football in, in the windows here. And then they get great pass rush from just the three pass rushers you see there along the line of scrimmage. Long delay, and that was crushed. I mean, Toon took two seconds, three seconds to hand it off to Keelan Walker. And Gumby, Gabe Summers, is there to uh, to rally up and make a nice stop, but it's a delayed draw play trying to invite BYU up the field and hand it off underneath. They just didn't get out of their rush lanes. Everybody stayed uh, the course, read it properly, and Gabe Summers comes up with a big, big play. Third and 14 for Clayton Toon. Pressure coming off the screen. It is Walker who's upended by Troy Warner, the senior, and it's fourth down for Houston. You kicking here? Yeah, no doubt. You got to take. I think you take the points early in a ball game against an experienced unit, a guy that against a team that can put it on the board quickly. You don't want to come away from this drive with with basically nothing if you fail on fourth down. So I think they're doing the right things. Thing here is go ahead and kick the field goal. For BYU and Kalani Sitake, the fifth-year head coach for BYU, he would, I'm sure, take just three allowed as Witherspoon tees up his first make of 2020. Opening drive score for Houston, up 3-0 in their second game this year. Conference on ESPN. Houston Cougars have taken the lead 3-0. Clayton Toon, their quarterback, 4-4 four for four on the opening drive. And BYU comes into this game just happy to play somebody. This is the original 2020 schedule for Brigham Young University. All the strike throughs, like actual humans had to do this with the schedule. Tom Homo, their athletic director, had a lot to do. This is what the schedule ended up being. They are 4-0 and as it stands right now. That Army game postponed. They played Navy and Troy and Louisiana Tech and then the win last week against UTSA. I mean, you talk about blowing up a schedule and then yeah. putting it back together. As an independent, this ain't easy, and BYU's done a marvelous job. And so on the kickoff return, BYU will get it across the 20-yard line on the return by Caleb Christensen. Zach Wilson, junior quarterback, he is the most accurate passer in the FBS. Over 80%, 81 and change. You got here just in time. Dax Mill down the sideline from Zach Wilson. And thanks for joining us. BYU touchdown 78 yards on their opening touch of the football. First play score. And it's not by accident. When you talk to Zach Wilson, he knows exactly where he's going with the football, who he's going to pick on early, stands in there and throws an absolute dime to Dax Milne, who just houses this baby. This is as good as it gets at the quarterback position when you're talking about Zach Wilson. If you are just tuning into this telecast, he's Andre Ware, I'm Jason Benetti, Chris Button on the sideline. You're gonna wanna meet Zach Wilson. We were as impressed with him last night as we chatted with him as any quarterback you're gonna run into. He is a file cabinet of information on himself and on yeah. the opposition, and this and ball is perfect. Yeah, and he doesn't tell you where he's going with his eyes. I mean, he takes you to the middle of the field and then spins his head and shoulders out left to Dax Mill. No safety help over the top.
Mel Kuyper Jr. has Zach Wilson at number five in the country in terms of 2021 draft prospects, but you think he's better than that. Yeah, I do. I've been watching him since his true freshman year. I've got him right behind Trevor Lawrence. In front of Kyle Trist, Justin Fields, Trey Lance. Have, you know, Trey Lance has played one game. Justin Fields has yet to play. I think experience on the field certainly factors in. But Zach Wilson can make every throw that you need to make on the next level. His study habits are just off the chart. He told us that he was as excited to get to fall camp as he had ever been because of all the studying he did during the quarantine period. Uh, he was even better at that point. But back at the beginning of fall camp, he got on the field and he felt like the game had slowed down tremendously for him. You yeah. saw the skill set a couple of years ago. Now the preparation is coming along. Yeah, and when you mix the two, you get excellence. And that's exactly how Zach Wilson's playing this season for BYU under center. I mean, you talk about driving 10 hours one way to work out with John Beck and then spin around on a Friday and come back on a Sunday night to get back to campus. That's what he does. And you know, he's been around some top flight quarterbacks uh, when, he, when he made that drive, Drew Brees to name a few. And uh, I think it's all, all that hard work and film study starting to pay off for Zach Wilson. He is as confident, but confidence based on preparation as anybody you're going to run into in a collegiate quarterback position. And he's got a 7-3 to three lead on his first throw as Clayton Toon, the junior quarterback who was perfect for Houston on the opening drive at 4-for-4. Four four. And he has a dangerous weapon in Marquez Stevenson, certainly. But Toon, as we were talking to him, uh, we found out his real name's John, so at some point, you know, we're going to have to do a comparison of John Clayton and Clayton Toon. But he can swing <laughs> a little bit on the links, by the way. He can. He can, and he's a, he's a mobile quarterback that you don't doesn't get quite the uh, credit deserved in terms of his ability to pull it down and make plays with his legs as well. So you start dropping into zone coverage, they will run some quarterback draw to keep you honest, keep linebackers in the box. This is Toon on the run with a four-man front, and it's third down coming up off the tackle by the sophomore linebacker, Keenan Peely. And if you just joined us, BYU is without their big defensive tackle, Kyrus Tonga, tonight. And Caden Haas stepping into those shoes. And Ky Kyrus Tonga could have gone pro a year ago, but elected to come back, really realized that they were going to have a special group this year and wanted to be a part of it, but he was going to be a draft pick in, uh, in the 2019 draft. Excuse me, 2020. Toon goes down the middle. It's tipped and nearly intercepted. Keenan Ellis, the former wide receiver, nearly reeled it in. Yeah, nothing good happens late over the middle. And you can see a hitch waiting. His eyes are glued to the receiver. And that's going to attract attention of this secondary at BYU. They're excellent in breaking on the football. A couple of really good players in the secondary. And Keenan Ellis, you saw there, Chris Wilcox, Troy Warner. A lot of experience on the back end of BYU secondary. It was the linebacker, Peyton Wilgar, who's a second-generation BYU player who got the tip on that ball. And Dax Milne back to receive the punt. And he will not have a chance. Zach Wilson to Dax Milne. We were going to tell you if you got here on time, you're going to see one of the most accurate passers you'll ever see. There it is. Football is presented by Ram, built to serve. If you're pretty young and you're watching college football, you may not know about the great quarterbacks that have come through BYU. But Heisman Trophy winner Ty Detmer, you and uh, Ty Detmer, Andre, back-to-back -back years. Heisman Trophy winners, he did it at BYU, you did it at Houston in the Southwest Conference. But Zach Wilson of BYU, who just struck on his first pass with 78 yard touchdown. What's that? He should, he should be in that conversation this year. He's that good. What were you impressed most with when we talked to him? I think just the confidence. And, and he, everyone asked him, how, what does he do in terms of the completion percentage? How are you so accurate? He's on target right there very quickly. 
for a first down across the 30-yard line to Mason Wake, his fullback. Yeah, and he, he says it's basically just confidence. Confidence from knowing where to go with the ball. Confidence that you studied enough to know where to go with the football. And then you just kind of let your athletic traits take over as he did there. I mean, he is... He plays with a lot of confidence. You can tell just when he, when he sits down. And we had a nice conversation with him last night. Tyler Algier on the run. He loses about half a yard. It'll be second down. Yeah, and Houston wants to take away that aspect of the BYU offense. Algier is on a heck of a runner. 19 carries, 116 yards. But if you can make BYU one-dimensional, then start to show them some different looks. And maybe... Heat up the kitchen of Zach Wilson a little bit. Now let's see if he can play with guys barreling down on him. Wilson scanning. Wilson will run. He's got six rushing touchdowns as well. And he veers across the line to gain and then some inside the 40 on the slide. Maybe Mel will change his, his order <laughs> after tonight. The kid can do it all. I mean, here, nobody's open. The Cougs play defense, play zone defense, so they're in deep zone drops. Nobody open. I'm going to just pull it down and make a big play with my legs. He is everything that you want at the position, as good as advertised, and he plays that way and shows it every single play. His mom, Lisa, his dad, Michael, are at the game. He and his father actually watched some tape this morning. And by the way, Zach Wilson even has some swag on his slide as they'll flip it back to Wilson. He loads up down the sideline and got it inside the five-yard line. Isaac Rex is tight end, first and goal. I asked Jeff Grimes, how many, how many of these trick plays do you have coming in? So well, we don't call them trick plays. We call them specials. We load up about two of them and go into each game with them. Well, there's the first one. A little end around and a flip back to Zach Wilson and a big play on the end of it. But nice play call there by Jeff Grimes catching the Houston Cougars out of position. Tell you what, this is as together of a football team as you could imagine, pandemic season or otherwise. They have sheer belief in everything they do as you watch tape and talk to them as Wilson will roll it to the right and use his legs. Wilson has... His seventh rushing touchdown. Not only is he uh, just about automatic through the air, all the athletic ability that you want to see at the position is just unbelievable. Big run to get things started, jump started on this drive. And I'm not sure if there's air under his knees. Where's the point of the football? as Grant Stewart, uh, one of the, the previous plays under leaders of this defense, on the field is a touchdown. makes a tackle. That's going to be hard to overturn. Just because you don't see the air. You don't see his knees there. And as you piece it together, I think it's going to stand, Jason. Remember, you need indisputable video evidence to overturn. Watch the left knee. That one's closer to the ground. And where's the ball? Looks like the point of the ball is over the goal line. But early in this game, Andre, do you remember a couple of years ago, Lamar Jackson had a Friday yeah. night game at Syracuse, and yep. he just set the world on fire? Zach Wilson in the first 10 minutes or so in this game feels like he might have a Lamar Jackson Friday night tonight. I cannot dispute that one bit, my man. Watching film on this guy, and you know, you hear about certain guys, but I've watched this kid since his freshman year in his first start, and you just kind of knew there was something special. And I told the BYU fans that night, hey, enjoy him for three years, because I don't know if there will be a fourth. He's that good. And you could see it back then, and he went to work on his game. Played all the last season injured with a shoulder and a thumb and fought through injuries, but he is healthy now, and you start to see the fruits of his labor. Three for three, 128 yards and a touchdown. Couple of runs, and we'll see if this touchdown stands as well. But Zach Wilson, who is very close to going to 
as we zoom in here and take another look, it looks like the point of the ball is over. But again, you need the camera to be directly down the goal line to and have clear proof there. Keep in mind that Grant Stewart's arm is under his left knee, so you don't know if it's on top of the knee. I mean, if the, if the knee is on top of his arm, wherever. So it's, as you mentioned, indisputable video evidence. And I don't know from any of the angles that we've had a chance to see that uh, it's enough to overturn the touchdown call. I agree with you. And doubling back, by the way, to that Lamar Jackson season, remember Houston was one of the teams that handled yeah, Lamar he did, Jackson. They, they sacked him 11 times that year. Well, the thing about the Cougars over the last couple of years, you put them in a big game, the Cougars of Houston, and I'm going to have to keep reminding myself of that because <laughs> both mascots are Cougars. But they will play well in big games. They will step up to the plate. They've done it against Oklahoma. They did it against Oklahoma. They did it against Florida State in the Peach Bowl. You put a team in front of them, and there's a lot on the line. They are going to show up and give you their best. Further Listen review, up. the runner was down with the ball at the half-yard line. It'll be second down. The clock will start on signal. Sometimes right, so we're I just gonna... don't, don't know what they're seeing that we don't see. We're going to try to show you here. We're going to combine angles at the same moment in time and show you from one side and the other if we get a chance to before they snap. I would we'll see what happens on second BYU here if, if we don't get a chance to show it for Algier. They love him in short yardage situations. See if they give him the football. It's oh. Wilson. They drive him forward, and let's see if this one is a touchdown. It looks like he's just short. It'll be third and goal. Right, let's go back to the previous play here. We get the opportunity. Lopini Katoa is going to run the next three. He's going to come in, I should say, as there you see Wilson combine the two looks so the knee looks like it's down there and he was a little bit short so Katoa the tailback Wilson gives it to him and that is a touchdown and that is final. Usually in that situation it's Algier they go to the other talented running back and Katoa and he has got he is equally as good and as impressive as Algier they go too deep. Jason just about everywhere on the offense and certainly that way on the defense. It is a talented, talented football team all throughout the roster. We showed you earlier the schedule that they might have played had the pandemic not hit. It was a nasty, thorny schedule, but you would have yeah. loved to have seen this BYU team play all those big time schools because they are extremely talented. Wilson didn't get the touchdown. Katoa did and BYU is humming. Ram Trucks. The Houston evening as the BYU Cougars lead on the road 14 to 3 in their first game in front of fans all year long. This game that was moved to Houston. But BYU to keep that lead is going to have to dodge oh, a guy they is, call Speedy. Yeah, there is a long this is a long way from the finish line. The, the Cougars in red will have a lot to say before the night ends. Stevenson housed one last week. Marquez Stevenson bottled up for a moment. Now he turns it outside and they string it out to the 21 yard line. What can he do, Andre? Uh, he can certainly house the football when you put it in his hands. Last week, five catches, 118 yards. That's 23 and a half yards per catch. Just get it to him some way, somehow. What else did he do on special teams? Took one to the house there. So you just get the football in this young man's hands and he let him do the rest. There is a reason that they nicknamed him Speedy. Yeah, you don't get called Speedy if you're even second place on the team in fast. 
with Clayton Toon against this BYU defense. And he bails out here across the 25 and out of bounds. What does Clayton Toon have to do tonight, Andre? Just relax. Relax himself. No, don't try to do too much. You're down 11. It's early in the ball game. You were down last week and fought his way out of a rough patch. So that's what he does now. Just one play at a time. You can't go get 11 points right now. So just play and get your football, keep your football team in this game. Keelan Walker on second down. They are a little bit shorthanded tonight in the running game. Mulba Carr is dinged up. He's available, but we'll see how much he plays tonight. Yeah, he left the game last week with an ankle injury. So tonight, they, they've gone to Keelan Walker second, and he's earned more playing times. Run with some, He runs with some electricity. He's got a little bit of burst to him, and uh, he's caught the coach's attention. Walker, who played at the powerhouse in DeSoto, Texas, sets up a second down. Hey, uh, I know you're excited about this fight coming up, oh by the way. Oh, my goodness. Lomachenko I can't wait Lopez. for this one. Can't wait till tomorrow night to, to turn this baby on. This is Young versus, you know, the pound-for-pound pound best in uh, in boxing. So you, you are right. I will be watching that one. Lopez has some swag, by the way. I was watching his victory celebrations <laughs> yeah. on YouTube earlier in the week. Dude. He's a big, big college football fan. Second and seven for Toon. Got to scan this defense, and he finds a soft spot in the middle of the field to Nathaniel Dell for a first down. Boy, this is excellent work by Toon. Scanning the field, going through the progression, and sitting in the pocket as the pass rush starts to close in on you. Man, that, that is not for the weak of heart. Yeah, that's why a lot of guys, they want to play that position and end up somewhere else. You've got to stand in there knowing at times you're going to take a shot. Walker on a first down run. That was Dell with the catch. And you asked Clayton Toon about Dell, and he said he's got some of the best hands he's seen. Yeah, he is a complete receiver. Uh, great body control. Solid in, in terms of tracking the deep ball, and he can cut on a dime. Walker again, a lot of run here for Keelan Walker. So how do you call this if you're Dana Holgerson and Shannon Dawson against this BYU defense on third and well, short? Stay committed to the run here because they're trying to take the pass away. They're going to line up in three-man, four-man fronts. Run the football. They do, and they got there wow. anyway. Undercut by Max Tooley, the former safety turn linebacker. Yeah, explosive player who is really good off the edge. Just fights off the block of Patrick Paul, the left tackle, and makes one heck of a tackle. And now you're fourth and three. Anywhere around midfield and beyond, that is four down territory for Dana Holgerson. Porter has checked in, fourth and three. Toon has the first down. Patience. Jeremy patience. Singleton, there is a flag down. He is showing patience, and he knew he would have to against this BYU secondary and the look that they like to implement defensively. A drop in the cover two, rush three, drop eight. You're going to have to wait and let receivers get into their routes and get settled and find creases within this zone coverage. Two safeties high, going to give you a chance to run the football a lot tonight. And when they bring a fourth, then that's going to open up a window. And I, I think Clayton Toon is playing some pretty good football right now. Will the 12-yard gain stand? Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, off this number 76. 15 yard penalty, repeat fourth down. Can't wow, have it. the play. Can't have it. Absolutely can't have it, Jason. You, you convert on fourth down. There he is, the left tackle, Patrick Paul. And he's got to follow in this play to the end. Uh, I don't know about, oh yeah, it's the after. Going to hit uh, Max Tooley. Tooley beat him the play before. 
to make the play in the backfield on Walker, and Paul was trying to pay him back, but there are a lot of guys in stripes watch it, so you you better wait a while before uh, you, you go there. That looked like a preview of a prospective Astros Dodgers World Series more than a play that Dana Holgerson wants. As Zach Wilson will have the football. Tell us about his skill set, Andre. Yeah, what he what can he do? He can do it all. I mean, he can throw throw on the run. He can throw from the pocket. He's got great arm strength. As you'll see here, to push the ball down the field. Can he throw receivers open? Absolutely. Great coverage on the back end, and he's winning with the throws. Young man can do it all. What about him makes him NFL ready, Andre? I think it's just his study habits. He's gifted physically, and when you mesh the two together and how much he loves football, it makes him the perfect prospect. And there he just sort of flicks it out there. He told us about his different arm angles and how much he feels like he can add types of throws. Yeah. And that's another look. As well, a flag you down. see it on Sundays from guys like Aaron Rodgers. You see it from guys like Patrick Mahomes, able to just kind of flick the ball from the side Personal on the foul. move. Face maps. Face maps. Defense, Defense number three. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Well, two big personal fouls have really hurt Dana Holgerson's Cougars. And you saw it on fourth down where it forced him into a punting situation instead of a first down. And then a face mask on the back end of this one by their middle linebacker, Donovan Newton, who is a great story. It's unfortunate. This is Dax Milled off the oh, spin. Wow. Cars at middle of the field. He, he nearly went, Andre, my goodness. Yeah, but to your point you know, about arm angles with Zach Wilson, I mean, he can do it from the pocket, on the That's run, the the just loves playing the game. Sundays are coming for him at some point soon, and his BYU Cougars are up big early. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. ESPN College Football presented by Ram Trucks. It is 14-3 BYU as we close quarter number one. BYU playing in front of a crowd for the first time this year. Jason Benetti, Andre Ware, Chris Budden along with you, our entire crew. And Zach Wilson off play action on second down. Climbing the pocket, using some touch down the middle into traffic it goes. And a flag comes in. And Gunnar Romney is his deep threat. Highly touted out of high school. And they, they came in. Him, he, Dax Mill, and Zach Wilson all came in in the same recruiting class. And now you're starting to see all that maturity kind of play itself out on the field. on the call here in mere moments it will be with us <laughs> I think pass interference defense number six 15 yard penalty automatic first down it's on to Marion Williams at a thin secondary Andre yeah that's the third major penalty and you see it there just all over Gunnar Romney but penalties that really have hurt this Cougar team at, a, at really unopportune times. Took away a fourth down conversion, added on to a big run, and then now an incompletion, but an obvious first down after the interference. Wilson again, and he is dropped at the 40-yard line. And for more on Wilson's preparation, here's Chris Button. Yeah, Andre hit the nail on the head. That confidence comes from the preparation. He watches hours of film a day. Just take yesterday, for example, on the play ride, he watched specialized clips of Houston. Every ball that was in the direction of a Houston defender. Then when he was done with that, he watched film of Aaron Rodgers. And then he watched film of Ohio State from 2019. And he woke up and watched film with his dad this morning. So eat, sleep, breathe football for this kid. It's it's like the fictional Alexander Hamilton. Like, how do you have as much time as you do 
to do everything you do to prep. And look, Wilson, has, as we talk to him, Andre, he has been as impressive as anybody as we've spoken to this year. And here are his parents, Lisa and Michael. Yeah, you, what you're impressed with is obviously the preparation and you read and talk to him about how he gets himself ready for the season and then each individual game. But then you see him within a game and it's not like he's checking the ball down a lot. I mean, he obviously does it when teams drop deep on him, but he is pushing the ball down the field. So the accuracy is certainly real from a stand from the standpoint of he is he is challenging defenses. We'll drop it down and get a few yards. There is a marker down one more time as that goes to Katoa, the tailback, and we'll check the flag. And Peyton Turner, the previous play, able to, to get to, to a couple of plays ago, able to get to Zach Wilson, which I think the Cougars in red certainly have to do tonight. Maybe get there without exposing cornerbacks. The illegal block in the back. Offense number 85. That penalty is declined. Brings up fourth down. We get his roommate, Braden Cosper. And it will be fourth down. It looks like it's punt time for BYU. Although, although Kalani Sitake is known for bizarre fake punt calls in the past. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I, I think a heck of a job, a series there defensively for the Houston Cougars. Obviously with Peyton Turner, that big sack really turned uh, this drive on its head and forced Zach Wilson to try to maybe get out of his comfort zone a little bit. Well, now maybe they maybe they kick a field goal with Jake Oldroyd here. Houston declined the penalty to set up fourth down, but they have left BYU in prospective field goal range with Oldroyd, whose long is 54 twice. Yeah, and they they say he's or Kalani Satake, the head coach of BYU, he's comfortable with Oldroyd from about 55 or so. He actually hit that 54 yarder against Troy, so they may have changed their mind. They, they, the just, they changed their mind yeah. here. So it'll be third and 29, and Wilson will go back out there. So Dana Holgerson yeah. said, hey, wait, wait, they're going to kick the field goal. I don't want that. <laughs> Let me go ahead and change my mind here and bring third down. But with that, you give a guy like Zach Wilson an, an opportunity. So hold on to your seat here. He's exceptionally accurate down the field as well. Third and 29. For Wilson, he'll go short, and this is just across the 50 to Gunnar Romney. So now fourth down to 46 and a half, and they'll go ahead and punt. You would imagine. Well, that's a setup for later. He throw a hitch route on fourth and 29, and later you're going to get either Demarion Williams or one of these cornerbacks. He's gotten to Sean Lewis already on a deep ball down the field, but you're setting up a pump and go, a hitch and go for later in this game to try to get Williams to jump. It is Demarion Williams back to receive the punt from Rico, the freshman in the state of Washington, and Williams will take the fair catch in from about the eight and a half. 14 to three BYU in H-Town, which gets a game seven in baseball. They're all excited. The Houston Cougars, it took a while for them to play college football because their game against Rice was postponed. Washington State totally canceled. At Memphis, rescheduled, so they added a game at Baylor, which also got postponed. North Texas was postponed. It took until last Thursday night for Dana Holgerson, who said basically after like the third game we prepped for, if that one got postponed, you know, like at some point, you're sick yeah. of just practicing. And yeah, that's there what was Clayton no surprise. Said. <laughs> no surprise by all the post the postpone postpone games at some point they were just waiting for it to happen as this first down run is for Porter and the Texas transfer he hits the 25 yeah this is why I'd like to see Kyle Porter get more carries I, I think he just gets better as the game progresses he is a tough inside runner downhill and he's gonna have I mentioned it earlier gonna have some opportunities because of this three-man front this three four that BYU implements.
Toon over the middle. This is the patience taking the shallow cross as a marker is down with Stevenson out of bounds. I love the patience. The eyes down the field and then checking it Holding. down. Holding. Offense number 76. 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Tough night for Patrick Paul, but Andre, to your point, tough to be patient when you're in first and 20. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's tough for any quarterback. I mean, you could be the best to ever play the game, and you're stuck in first and 20 trying to get out of a hole. Basically, what you're relying on is a penalty on the defense to bail you out. There are very few uh, play callers that have thrived in first and 20, a catch and a long run, but not the way this BYU defense is built. Houston's got 55 penalty yards already tonight as Toon tees this one up to nice. the far side. And Corbin coming across the way. Keith Corbin across the 30-yard line, and they got a lot of it back on a shallow pass pattern. Yeah, there's the catch and the run, because you're not going to throw anything down the field against BYU. But you can do this, catch the football and run. When you're working against a team like BYU, you want good route runners that understand zone coverages, and then you want guys in the game at receiver that are dynamic after they catch the football. So that's a hard mix to find because a lot of guys are good route runners, but it's against man coverage. They don't have a feel for zone. But when you can get the mix of good route running in terms of finding soft spots in zone, and then you're af good after the catch, then you've hit a home run. Well, a whistle and a timeout for Houston. That was a 16-yard gain. Our statistician Ed Spita reports that he ran 40 yards sideways. More of that after this. All right, so that Lopez KO you just saw was right before his Fortnite victory dance. He also has done a Heisman pose, Andre, yeah. which I know you will appreciate after a victory. This is going to be a great fight. He always seems to fight like the second week in December as well. And, you know, obviously this one is going to be, this is fireworks right here. I cannot wait until tomorrow night to watch this. Pound for pound, as good of a boxer as there is, Lomachenko and the young gun, Lopez. Second and four for Houston, and they will move the sticks with Porter to Chris Button. Yeah, Dana Holgerson, <laughs> not happy right now. He was upset with his team for not having the right personnel out there. He's been upset with his offensive line for the penalties. Came over and told them, you have to cut out the unnecessary stuff. He told me before the game, that was the biggest piece they had to fix from last week. It's rolled over into week two. Wonder if that was verbatim what Dana said on the sideline from Chris. They did not give him the first down, so it was third down and one as Porter crawls for that first down for Houston. I think Dana realizes just how important this game is. I mean, we've spent a lot of time talking about Zach Wilson. He's coming into your building. You don't want to hear that. He doesn't want to have BYU walk out of that stadium with a victory. And then from what we talked about at the top in terms of the an eliminator game. Great catch. And to Trahan across the 35, and that is a big-time weapon, Christian Trahan. Yeah, one of the toughest guys on this team and was the player of the game after catching one pass for three yards in last week's win over Tulane, and it was because he does so much dirty work for this offense. Shannon Dawson, his offensive coordinator, said Christian Trahan blocks people like he's trying to embarrass them. He is tough as nails, 6'3", 245. He's added about 10 pounds since last season. He is a stud. And U of H, Houston has made a change at left tackle. It's not Patrick Paul in there who had the, the personal foul penalty. They've made a change at that spot. It's Ruben Unigi who checks in for Paul, and this run to the left side, to the strong side, goes to Porter and a first down for Houston. So less penetration now, and the Cougars driving down the field. Yeah, it's starting to get some momentum. Look at this. Look at the numbers. All those big grunts in there, and 
just a couple of defensive linemen. Me as a quarterback, whatever I have called, I'm going to audible out of it and give the football to Cal Porter. Turn around, give it to a back, let the big guys up front do the work. It's presented the same thing right here. Quick set for Toon. Down the nice middle throw. again and a touchdown for Trahan. Great touch by Clayton Toon to his reliable weapon and tight end and Christian Trahan. This the touch right over the outstretched arms of the linebackers. And the timing is what wins for Clayton Toon. Just as Trahan is about to clear. The ball is placed into a spot, into a window in zone coverage. One heck of a result at the end. Talking to Shannon Dawson, the offensive coordinator, you felt like Christian Trahan was something of a sleeping giant. He is absolutely awake in this game. He has led Houston down the field to pay it off with his own touchdown, and the Houston Cougars are back in it. Yeah, first first three games against the Rays, not so good. Trail three nothing. Now game seven's coming. Houston first couple of drives the last two weeks have been a struggle. The last drive was brilliant from Clayton too. Yeah, it really was. I mean, against zone coverage, you have to anticipate and throw into windows. Against man to man, you're really depending on your receiver to win for you, and then the ball's out. You anticipate based on his body language, but you've got to trust that a guy's going to be in the right spot and. He certainly did with, with Trahan. The 25 for BYU. More on the touchdown score, Christian Trahan with Chris Button. Jason, every coach on this Houston team will tell you that Christian Trahan is the strongest player on this team, and he's had to be recently. His mom's house and his aunt's house back in Louisiana were destroyed by Hurricane Laura just a couple months ago. So their director of football operations has started a GoFundMe page and already up to $15,000 to help support those families and rebuild their homes. And he's an amazing young man. Yeah, it is no been doubt about it. An awful situation, but credit to the Houston football program for doing what they can to help in that way. As Wilson comes to the near side and has an incompletion on a long throw, and Peyton Turner got in there. Yeah, keep in mind the play that they on the fourth down and long or a third down and long. He threw that hitch route, and it was to Williams' side. He's, he, he told me yesterday. He knows Williams is an aggressive defender. So what he's going to do is he sets it up with a hitch route. Don't, don't be surprised if he doesn't come back with a hitch and go at some point. That sounds like you've done that to a defensive back before. No doubt. You study film, and obviously Zach Wilson's one of the best at doing it on this level. But you see guys' characteristics. You see how they play in games. Do they take a risk? Okay, at some point, I'm going to set him up. Little hitch route, get him to bite up quickly, and then I'm going to hitch and go him and take advantage of his aggression. No doubt about it. He, he's going to come back to that at some point. You tell me later on in the show who you did that to in the NFL. I'm really interested <laughs> in who you might bury. Third down for a Wilson. Looking for a first down to the sideline and a couple of incompletions. You see the celebration on the Houston sideline. They are pumped. That's two consecutive drives by this BYU offense where the Cougars have played outstanding defense. You see there Williams in excellent position to make a play on Zach Wilson. Two times they forced a punt. And now with an opportunity to go down and, and take a lead in this game. And it is Demarion Williams, the corner who was big on that drive. Back to receive for Houston, which came back from 17 down last week to beat Tulane in their opener this year. Williams on the return to Marion Williams is finally knocked down after a strong return to set up Houston with pretty good field position. A Sunday NFL countdown before Brady and Rodgers get together Sunday 10 a.m. Eastern time. We'll look into the life of the backup quarterback. Plus, Randy Moss, best uh, catches from college football. Sunday NFL countdown, 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. And then Monday Night Football, it's the Cardinals in Dallas. The Red Rifle, Andy Dalton. It's your turn. 8 Eastern time. 
as the Cardinals take on the Cowboys Monday night countdown at six. Starts what a show. homecoming for Kyler Murray going back to it Dallas is. where he won a bunch of state championships as a high school player. Toon has not been greedy as his coaches asked him not to be, and he's got this one to Trayvon Bradley. And the thing about it, Jason, is that by being patient later in this game, it's going to force BYU to come out of what they feel comfortable doing defensively. They're going to have to play some man-to-man, -man, take some risk to get to Clayton Toon, and that's when you find the one-on-one -on -one matchup that you like. This is Mul Bakar crawling for a first down. Hey, Clayton Toon last week, Andre, was four for five against the Blitz. He was really good against design pressure. Well, he started the game tonight four of four for 59 yards, and I think he's played a heck of a ball game, showing you some touch himself to Christian Trahan on that touchdown pass and is sitting in there reading things out, and later they will push the ball down the field. By the way, Patrick Paul has checked back in as BYU had some Free movement play. at the line. Free play, tuned down the sideline, and he threw a 50-50 ball on target to Bradley. And he caught a nice one last week against Tulane on that same sideline. He'll decline this offsides penalty on Tyler Batty. Offside, defense number 92. That penalty is declined. Result of the play, first down. And it just looks like it comes in waves with this Cougar team. When they start to have success, it's it's in waves where you're just overwhelmed with the speed and the athletic ability of the U of H Cougars. That's how Dana Holgerson did it at West Virginia. He spent some time at Oklahoma State as well. He did a lot of studying of BYU as he was growing up too in the Lavelle Edwards system as Toon Flashes another one to the sideline, and he's got Jeremy Singleton. So we've heaped a lot of praise on Wilson, but Clayton Toon's having a night. I think to this point in the game, he's outplayed Zach Wilson. I mean, nice job of just reading things out. It's a corner route where it's got to be thrown on time, or the safety can obviously affect the play, and it's thrown in the proper position. You don't throw a corner route against zone coverage to the corner. You've got to bring the receiver down. It's almost like an out route where you flatten the receiver out with a throw, and that's exactly what Clayton Toon did in that situation. So he had to reach for it, but you're okay with that? No doubt about it. Perfect throw. First and goal. This is Porter, and he's blockaded at the six. Second and goal. What do you like for Toon here in this situation? Well, they get down here. They like to spread you out, and they'll run quarterback draw. They'll also run a boundary receiver one-on-one. -on -one. They'll go to, to uh, Marquez Stevenson. If they put him to the boundary, then that's where they'll go with the football. Two backs, they like the counter. Jet sweep action, Grayson Smith is dropped at the five third down and goal that's the man you were talking about Caden Hawes in for Tonga he's got the tackle yeah the true freshman signed as an offensive lineman and when he got to campus they moved him to the defensive line he's got some big shoes to fill tonight because Tonga's one of the best in the country at nose tackle Tonga felt some symptoms of an illness he said I want to stay back just in case and so that's why Tonga did not make the trip. Third down and goal for Toon. To the goal line and touchdown. His eighth straight completion is a score for Dell. Rolling on the field is a touch for a touchdown. And what a well-designed play and it was executed perfectly. Dell's just going to get to the end zone and put his heels in the in the end zone and sit there. Show his numbers to his quarterback. You can see Clayton Toon scan the field from left to right and is able to find Dell in time before the defense gets there. That is reading it out, going through your progression and getting to the right receiver. Andre, I know you love this. This is a high-level quarterback play tonight. This is this is good stuff right here, my man. Great quarterback history at these two schools. 
And Houston, which was down 24-7 last week in its opener, got a win anyway. Clayton Toon is firing tonight. Back, let's take a look at some pretty good quarterback play tonight. Zach Wilson starts the game to Dak Mill, just finds his guy, climbs the ladder, and makes a 78-yard catch and run touchdown. Then Clayton Toon has come back and played some outstanding football. Finding his receiver in the corner of the end zone, Nathaniel Dell, to put the U of H Cougars ahead of BYU. Boy, I'm, hey, I'm telling you, Jason, uh, some outstanding quarterback play in this one tonight. BYU's going to get at the 25. Look, Dana Holgerson said to us, you better believe Clayton Toon knows that the guy on the other side is one of the stars, one of these really great players. I want to know from your vantage point which game it was for you where you said, you know what, I got to ramp up my game because that guy on the other side, I want to do better than him. Oh, there were several. I mean, you put me on the spot to, to identify one, but uh, you're mindful of it. You obviously can't go on the field and, and compete against him, but in an indirect way, you know that you don't want a guy, especially in your own building, to come into your stadium and leave having outplayed you. So I think Clayton Toon is off to one heck of a start here, and it's but it's still early. Is there one in the NFL that you remember that you were like, all right, this dude? I remember, well, one that comes to mind, and, and this is going to date me a little bit, but when Coach Belichick was with the Cleveland Browns, they came into Detroit with Bernie Kosar, and uh, that was one that I, would, there was, I wasn't going to let Bernie Kosar outplay me that day, not that <laughs> afternoon, and we wound up knocking Cleveland out of a playoff run. I can hear the fierce in your voice, like you were just playing him right now, which is pretty awesome, as Algiers got a first down and then some. The former linebacker, Tyler Algier, off a little swing pass for a gain of 18. Yeah, now they they got the Cougars playing zone. So what happens? You take deep zone drops. You allow the back on a free release. And he, Algier does a nice job just showing that two and five to Zach Wilson, who puts it right between him, between the numbers, and allowing him to just turn up the sideline make a play for you. So I, we were talking during the break. Well, Zach Wilson had a little bit of pressure on him this drive to to produce for BYU Some more pressure Wilson tried to elude it and threw it into the ground the pressure came very quickly And it'll be second down as David and Ninny got in there Yeah, Joe Cawthon the defensive coordinator for U of H has done a heck of a job in my opinion of calling defenses the last three series given a nice mix of zone coverage and when they're gonna heat up Zach Wilson, so they're trying to keep a very cerebral quarterback guessing uh, as, as this game has progressed. Second down run, Katoa. Where would you say Wilson needs to get better as he looks towards Sundays? Boy, it's hard to, to poke holes in his game. I mean, it really is. Uh, you'd have me, as much film as I've watched and studied, I really can't find a lot of weaknesses in his game. The arm strength is there, uh, the mobility is there, the accuracy is what you're really looking for. Anticipation, uh, he anticipates as well as anybody, receivers coming open. Katoa broke one tackle and Katoa is very close to the line to gain and it looks like he is right on it as Peyton Turner finally knocked him down. I thought Peyton Turner was gonna have him just shy of the yard to gain. Good job here by Zach Wilson. Just get it to a playmaker, but Giovanni Stewart is what really, who really made the play, turning him back inside to Peyton Turner, who was playing from inside out, but it forced him to change his momentum. Just slow down just a tad. It is a first down, and this is Algier right up the gut for a first down to the 30. Almost came out of that. A shoestring tackle by one of the Cougars on the third level. And now you're playing a nice chess game between Jeff Grimes and Joe Coffin, both coordinators. Is this Impey, the center, who has been in and out of the lineup this year? He's missed the last two weeks.
BYU 135 combined offensive line starts and they are protecting Wilson. You were talking about the strengths. Here's what you think, right? Yeah, I mean, you want arm strength? This was against Louisiana Tech a couple of weeks ago. Far hash mark on a dime between coverage where the safety in the corner can't make a play. Does he have touch? Absolutely. Off the play fake, over the top, throwing guys open. Again, just touch over the top into the end zone again to Carter Wheat. And then is he mobile enough? Yeah, he is. You drop deep in zone coverage, he'll take off running on you on a quarterback draw. I mean, he has got all the ingredients that you look for at that position. Chris mentioned earlier he's got this wristband that says dominate. He talks like he wants to be dominant. He's not going out there to mess around. Oh, he's not. I mean, that's why he studies so hard. It's why he drives 20 hours in a weekend to go work on his game when he could be hanging around, you know, with his roommates doing who knows what. That's a first down to Wilson right on the money to one of those roommates, Dax Milne. That's what they do as roommates. Yeah, they play and watch, catch. The lo watch the location of this football. It's out in front where you catch it on the move, and there's no hesitation. That's the accuracy playing itself through right there. You get man-to-man -man coverage, he's going to put the ball in a spot where you don't have to wait on it. You just catch it, and in your natural move, continue on up the field after you catch it. Play action, pop pass over the top, and it's batted away. That was into double coverage, and Gervarius Owens, the safety, was the man in front of it. An excellent play here, and kind of kind of uncharacteristic of Zach Wilson to throw into that coverage when he had Milne on the outside singled up. I think he was might have been expecting one look from the Cougars, and they changed the deck, reshuffled the deck. And all of a sudden, there was an extra defender there. Wilson again tees it up, and that's batted away. It's Owens one more time, and third down. Yeah, they really wanted Owens to play corner last year, but because of injuries, he had to move to safety. So it tells you about the cover skills of this guy on the back end. He's got corner cover skills playing safety. Great instincts on the back end of this U of H defense. I'm with you. Joe Cawthon has called a tremendous game to confuse yeah, Zach Wilson. Yeah, he's done a nice job of mixing up different looks, not giving him the same thing twice. And when I asked Zach, what are you expecting to see? And he says, well, they just kind of line up and run what they're lined BYU. up in. And that has not the first the been half. the case tonight 30 seconds in length. for U of H defensively. Buck 22 away from our AT&T 5G halftime report. As Matt Berry told you a little earlier, SMU gets to 5-0. First team to do that. The latest on Nick Saban and his ability to coach in that game tomorrow against Georgia. Still pending. And then Joey and Jesse's virtual locks coming up at halftime as well. Some big games over the weekend, including Mac Brown at Florida State. I know Florida State's really struggled this year. Carolina is on the up and up still feels a little bit like a danger game for yeah. Sam Howell and the Tar Heels. Still one of those teams, though, that will match your intensity, Florida State. And it's a matter of can they sustain it for, for the entire game. But you can best believe North Carolina is going to get their best when, that ball, when the ball's kicked off. Dana Holgerson and uh, U of H just happy to play a football game. Game number two this year for Houston. BYU trying to get to 5-0 and as well. As you see, Saturday Night Football, Sam Howell, one of the best at throwing the ball downfield to take on Florida State. And now and we have be, another whistle. Don't be surprised here if BYU doesn't put Zach Wilson on the move. Take advantage of his mobility and give him a, a two-way out, whether he can throw it or run it. Operator, please put 122 on the game clock. 122. We lost 11 seconds. Look, enough games are getting postponed or canceled. We cannot afford <laughs> 11 every seconds second. less. Give them every second of playing time. Is that what you're saying? What, Dan? I mean, that's like 
That's like a fifth of the season for Houston so far, right? You can't be taking 11 seconds from a 1-0 team in October. Third down. They do move him. Wilson on the roll. Has a completion. Little stop on the sideline by Pau. And now an interesting choice for Kalani Sitake on fourth down. Now they do move him. Give him the option. Try to block it up on the edges to where he can either throw it. And he elects to to Pau or run it had a receiver not come open. But nice. You, you kick it or are you going one for situation it? here. I think he came to win. So you've got two outstanding backs in Katoa, who scored already in this game. And then Algier is a tough inside runner. It amazes me that he is a, a, was a walk-on at BYU, a former walk-on who, who actually has jumped back and forth between Time linebacker, BYU. linebacker and running back. 30 seconds in lane. So timeout BYU, they'll think it over. I'm with you. Go for it. You're on the road. You're playing in front of fans for the first time. Go try and win it, especially when you don't know when your next game is going to be. Here's the original schedule for BYU. Uh, the strike throughs are coming, and they're coming in full force. Red pen everywhere. It's then at Navy. The second game's postponed. They're 4-0, but that Boise State game on November the 6th ends up being their best game. San Diego State as well. But BYU really tried to schedule to put together a murderer's road this year, and they had it taken away due to the pandemic. But you can't fault Kalani Sitake, who's a very good man, for trying yeah. to put his team against great competition. Well, you look at that schedule, and it's Big Ten, Pac-12, SEC, some American in there. I mean, it, it is loaded with, uh, with competition from the standpoint of if they play that and, and BYU's able to run the table with that schedule, it'll be hard to keep them out of the playoff. They are going for it on fourth down and one. That a stay and home we have more BYU. whistles. BYU has used their third and final timeout of the half. 30 seconds of night. They wanted to see the look, but if you're Houston, you got to make sure that you stay home because you're going to get a hard count whether the ball snapped or not to try to draw you off sides and pick up a freebie here. So first things first is to not jump into the neutral zone. And BYU is, you know, they got to make sure they get things blocked up, try to utilize the hard count, and then uh, hand it off to one of these talented backs. Look, there's some grounded pound in the BYU history, and Kalani Sitake told us yesterday that the thing that he was most excited about about his extension to 2023 is that he keeps getting the chance to make Lavelle Edwards proud. And yeah. there is some fourth and one, put your head down and go get it in Lavelle Edwards' history. Out of the eye, fourth and one. Straight ahead, and Wake is driven back. Houston holds the line. I don't like the call at all, not one bit. You have two talented backs in Katoa and Algier, and you give it to a guy who's carried the football four times, well, three times all season. And a fullback, so you got to we'll see what the flag is, but I'm not taking it. This is a time where playmakers need to have the, their hands on the football. And those playmakers are Katoa and Algier. Grant Stewart got in there to make the play. Second team all-conference player last year who they talk about playing with such a big heart as Mason Wake, who's known for hurtling defenders and grinding runs, was stopped up. The result of the play was a short for down. It'll be, it'll be first down, Houston. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number 31. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Not Derek Parrish, but here's the stop, Andre. Maybe a little celebrating, but yeah, I mean this. That's number 31, first you're, you're, unsportsmanlike foul of the game. You're, you're going to a play, and you called a couple of timeouts to get to that play call. And I was already concerned. You start getting concerned when you tighten it down 
now you got to work on, you know, worry about can you move defenders off the football where if you keep them spread out and maybe try to run that a little, there's a little bit more room in which to maneuver, but I don't know about spending a couple of timeouts to come up with that play call. Usually a very inventive play calling team, BYU, and that was as conservative as can be. First down from Barry near the end zone, and they get a nice gash on a first down run for Porter. And that's all you want is a drive starter. Now you got more than enough time as the clock stops to reset the chains, two timeouts in your back pocket, and a hot quarterback. So this is more than enough time to, right now you're thinking field goal if you're the Cougars of Houston. Leighton Tune as hot as can be, as you said. He's now 13 out of 14 off that completion across now the 25 for Porter. Now Dana may take a timeout here and settle everybody down. He may save them. I, I would take the timeout so you get everybody settled down and you get the proper play call. They're bleeding sand from the hourglass here. They lost about 10 seconds after that play as Tune climbs the pocket and feeds it left side for another completion to Corbin. Uh, play clock, excuse me, the clock will stop again, but nice job climbing the pocket. You feel the rush outside you and no one in front of you. You can climb it and an excellent placement on the ball. Lowen, get your receiver down after the first down. I think he decides to spin a timeout. They're stuck under the half. 30 seconds. To the 29 half. seconds. In the second quarter, tomorrow, Jimbo Fisher and the Aggies in Starkville to take on Mike Leach and Mississippi State and the other air raid. 4 Eastern, 3 Central on ESPN and the ESPN app. Dana Holgerson was talking to us about Mike Leach, and he said jokingly, sort of, I think, that he spent <laughs> about a decade trying to get Mike Leach to call a running play. And Mike Leach <laughs> kept convincing him that somebody was open on the passing plays. Yeah, they're dropping eight, nine guys, Coach. You know, that run would might pop in there. And <laughs> he was like, well, somebody, he said, Coach Leach would tell him, well, somebody's got to be open. They can't cover them all. Hey, how about how about Clayton Toon? Ten straight completions. This is the last three drives accounting for nine of them. I've been very impressed with the ball game that Clayton Toon has played tonight. On first down, waits his turn, window opens. First down and then some for Tank Dell across midfield. One timeout remaining, 21 seconds. Yeah, clock it here and save the timeout. There you go, nice job. And make sure, make sure to clock it forward. <laughs> and not behind you. Yeah, that, that's a mistake you don't want to make when, <laughs> when you're the team on the charge here. Dell's trying to get the call from Toon. That officially goes as an incompletion, so that breaks the streak for Toon, and it's second down from the 45, and they will run it with a timeout in their pocket. Now you got to use the timeout. That's got to be a setup play, Andre. I mean, what, what do you think? I saw that against uh, in the SMU two-lane game. I couldn't believe it then, and I can't believe my eyes now. Yeah, you go ahead and throw the football, and if you advance it, you still have the timeout. Maybe you work the edges, and you can get a receiver out of bounds. Or he catches it and is able to get out of bounds and save some time. But don't know where a running play fits in right there. You're guaranteed to lose your last timeout if you run it. Guaranteed. I'm, I'm with you. It doesn't make any sense. Now you take away the option of being able to throw the ball in the middle of the field and still call the timeout. Now it's just you're trying to clock it and you might run out of time. So now I'm thinking you got to go, you got to push the ball down the field here if you're trying to get in the end zone. Toon steps up, Toon runs, Clayton Toon slides down. Now he's got seven seconds, clock will stop on the first down. A chance to spike it and they will get an opportunity, it seems like, for Witherspoon with four seconds so field goal range for Houston but Witherspoon will only have 
this opportunity from the hash mark. He did make 15 in a row last year at one point. Range is about 52 yards, so this is well within his range. Witherspoon, he got it. So Houston pays off the final drive. BYU will get the ball at a halftime, but the Houston Cougars are playing some great football right now, Andre. That's that momentum thing that we talked about. When they seize momentum, they don't let up. They will keep coming at you in waves until they just overwhelm you. Houston was down 17 last week and one up six now after trailing early. After the break, Matt Berry, the AT&T 5G Halftime Report. You're watching ESPN College Football presented by Ram Trucks. It's the American Conference on ESPN from Houston tonight. And we have had a fun one. Quarterback slinging it all over the yard. 20 to 14. Houston with the lead over BYU. I got a Heisman quarterback here. We have a State Farm player spotlight to get to. Uh, and I know it's going to be about the quarterbacks. You're smiling because you love the way they're slinging it, aren't you? Well, I love good quarterback play, and it, it just makes a game so much interest, so much more interesting. Then you got a guy coming in, highly touted, and Zach Wilson, and you got a guy on the other side, Clayton Toon, who's just not going to let him outplay him on his home field. This is great, good stuff. Mention the State Farm player spotlight. There it is. Zach Wilson, Clayton Toon. Compare and contrast, Andre. What do you like? Well, you look at it, and Clayton Toon has really been uh, the story of the first half of this one. Two touchdown passes. He's thrown with, with touch. He's thrown with accuracy. He's pulled the ball down and made plays with his legs. And then Zach Wilson started off hot. But then the last couple of drives, it's taken him a little bit, a little bit longer to get himself going. But I'm enjoying every down of it, Jason. I think people at home are too. These guys are playing at a really high level as Zach Wilson will throw on first down in rhythm. He's got pow -oo. And we check in with Chris Button, who spoke with Dana Holgerson moments ago. Coach, you told me that Clayton Toon, he needed to eliminate the bad. What have you seen from him today? Uh, not too much bad. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's extremely accurate with the ball. He's going with where we want him to. Getting us into a bunch of good run checks, you know, and he's doing a good job of protecting the ball. So happy with his performance so far. What's allowed you to slow down BYU's offense? Uh, just settling in. We're still, the season's still real new to us, you know. So just because we got one game under our belt doesn't mean we got all our, our early game blunders and, and anxiety and all that stuff out of our system. These guys are real seasoned. They're old, they're experienced, and they've played four games. You know, we're relatively inexperienced. We've only played one, so it's nothing that's uncommon. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Andre, your thoughts on what Dana said after one game plus? It's true, and, and you can see that, you know, they have some mistakes, penalties that stop drives and allow BYU to continue drives. and. And then all of a sudden, they are like a machine moving down the field, both on offense and defense. Wilson to Dax Mill, and they try to strip it away and cannot do it. That was Donovan Mutant who was trying to rip the ball free. Third down and one. Yeah, he is a heck of a player right in the middle of that defense of, of Houston. And just a great story. Got a chance to really sit down and or talked to him yesterday, and an interesting story. Dad is a chef, excellent, excellent chef. Talks about him, his specialty being steaks and gumbo, obviously from Louisiana. Wilson on the run trying to bounce it outside, and he's stacked up, so Houston's defense again stops up Zach Wilson and BYU. Yeah, you know, I don't understand it. They keep going to these sets where they're tight and bringing a lot of red jerseys to the to the point of attack and they really aren't moving U of H off the football when they have them spread out 
is when they're able to run the football and run it effectively. They're going for this. What do you think? Maybe they they go into a hard count here and try to draw the draw U of H offsides. I don't see them snapping this football. Oh, they go for it, and Wilson off play action goes down the sideline. It's incomplete to Marion wow. Williams, and a flag comes in. I'm shocked that the ball was snapped more than anything. Pass interference. Defense number six. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Now, remember what I told you earlier about Zach Wilson, our conversation, and him talking about Demarion Williams being aggressive there, trying to jam Romney at the line of scrimmage, and then he's got to interfere with him to get himself back in the play. That's a target. That's a, a, a place where Zach Wilson feels comfortable going to when he needs to complete a pass. I don't know why, because Williams has been in pretty good position all night long. Wilson again for Dax Milne and a short gain of two. Chris Button. Kalani Sataki told me before the half he liked how aggressive they've been in the play calling. He said, we're on the road. we got to continue to put our foot on the grass, gas and keep up that aggressiveness. Well, look, we talked about the aggressiveness from Kalani yeah. Sitake in that Boise State game four years ago with the fake punt to beat all fake punts. And the guy who had that fake punt, Johnny Linehan, tweeted at us. He's watching the game tonight. So he loves the aggressiveness. <laughs> I know Johnny does, the punter who had that wild play as a fall comes in. Well, if we were to go back and look at the success of where False BYU starts. was successful. Offense number 67, five-yard penalty. Still second down. It's been with, you know, three receivers in the game, single back. You know, that that's where they've been effective running the football. When they tighten down, that's playing into the other Cougars' hands and giving them a shot because they just aren't moving bodies off the football. But when you spread them out, you get you create better blocking angles in which to operate for the offensive line. Like here, they can run the football out of this set. Exactly right, Andre. It is Wilson hopping to the edge of the offensive line and a short game, third down coming up. But you like the call. I like the call. You, you're going to take zone drops, and Wilson is a better than average runner. I mean, he is, he's re a really good runner for the at the quarterback position. So you start to drop deep, bringing four, just let him clear and find you a spot to sneak through. Still, right now, third and long is advantage. Cougars in the red. The bell tolls in the background. Third down and 10. Play clock winding down. Wilson's got a hurry. And a flag comes in. I don't know if they've got their timeout called in time or. This officiating crew has been prone to conversation tonight, let's say. False start. Offense number 71. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Right now, Freeland. the speed of the University of Houston, it's, it's like a basketball game and you want to play at a certain tempo. Well, the tempo is being dictated by the U of H Cougars at this point, to the point where it's taken so long to get a play call in. You're trying to slow this wave wave down this wave of momentum but you're just not having the type of success that you want right now and it's carrying over to all aspects of this football game it's a screen on Algiers Stewart gets the drive by Algier down wow. the sideline Tyler Algier my goodness There's a flag down on the play. We'll see if it stands. Hey, when it's a screen, it's usually a block in the back or a hold. Illegal block in the back. Offense, 10 yard penalty, repeat third down. 46 yard touchdown wiped out. 
You just don't see BYU make the type of mistakes that they're making tonight. And that tells me that the game is being played at a pace in which they're not comfortable with. And they're, the block in the back. Andre, he just caught, Rex kind of fell into him yeah, there. Yeah, just kind of fell right into him. Wilson dumps it off to Katoa, and he's down at the 41. So this is going to be fourth down and long from the 41. What's your call? Well, it's you, you don't want to leave your offense out there and, and go for it because it's going to give you have made some excellent field position. I think you punt and try to pin them down inside the 10 yard line here. Wilson on the sideline, a lot of heavy praise for Aaron Roderick yesterday from his offensive coordinator, Jeff Grimes. Roderick, the quarterback's coach, as they will punt it with Rico. And that is what it, to the one. He fair caught it at the one. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. What, son, what are you doing is the, the question Dana Hogerson is getting ready to ask Bryson Smith. Can we go Fair through a BYU game without a ridiculous punt play, please? Wow. Whoa. Wow. First fair catch at the one of the weekend, Andre. <laughs> yeah, the rule, Jason, is to put your heels on the 10-yard line. If the ball's in front of you and you feel like you can't return it, you fair catch. But under no circumstances do you back up to fair catch a ball and certainly not at the one yard line. I mean, Dana Holgerson read him the riot act and I, I don't know what you can say that's a teaching point other than everything that you just said. And they do the smart thing trying not to I'm going to hold the ball with Clayton Toon or have him hold it run the football. They've been able to do that with Kyle Porter effectively throughout this game. Remember, Houston does have a 91-yard touchdown drive already as that one is Ooh. tipped, and it's third down. Aiden Wilgar. Zach Daw got a hand in. Yeah, Haas did, and then Wilgar was out there, I think, as well, reading the eyes of the quarterback. And Zach Daw with a big paw on it when that ball hung in the air a long time. A short trip to the end zone from down here. Third down for Toon to the edge and a great adjustment. Bob Corbin first down. Yeah, and the safety Zane Anderson is just hung on the hash mark. There's no help over the top for the corner. And it would touch by Clayton Toon. He's thrown a couple of these tonight where it's on the outside. The safety, even if he tries to come over, but you've got to make an effort. Once you see the quarterback pull his hand back as a safety to break over the top and help the corner. What did Clayton Toon tell us about Keith Corbin? He said he makes quarterbacks right a lot yep. of the time. And that was a great adjustment by Corbin to make a first down happen for Houston. Ooh. And that was incomplete into big time traffic in Wilgar. And that was Zane Anderson as well, who moved to safety from linebacker. That's talking yesterday I'm like I'm used to seeing guys move from safety down to linebacker but never up a linebacker that moves to safety but that's the case with Zane Anderson defensive coordinator beside Tuiaki told us that yesterday I'm like never seen that one before they have moved a lot of these guys around as pressure comes on tune and he slices another run through the air for a first down. Great throw one more time to Cole McGowan, his first catch. Well, they use the play action, but then Toon has to escape because of pressure. And how about that throw right out in front of McGowan. McGowan and a big first down. Boy, Clayton Toon is now cooking. He has taken this this challenge personally and is really playing some good football. Toon is hit and he is dropped. The ball came out and 
Let's see. It is going to be Houston ball. Toon had to fall on it, and there has not been a lot of pressure on him so far today. That time it got there. Well, I think they just brought four, but they ran a game up front with a linebacker, outside linebacker, and a defensive end. And that ball came out. It looks looks like a BYU player came up with it, but they ruled it second down quickly. That was Isaiah Kafusi who came in, one of 11 cousins, six uncles who have played college football, a family of high competition. Tune to the sideline, and that is incomplete. And the flag comes flag. in. It's George Udo, the sophomore, on the coverage. And they found something that they like. And that's Keith Corbin on a corner route to the short side of the field. And there's no safety help. You're putting corners in a bind, and Corbin's such a good route runner, and Toon has got found Pass a rhythm. Defense number seven. Ball would be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. And Toon has found a rhythm throwing that pass. It was my favorite. Because you can do so much with it. If you get a defender that's underneath, you lead the... The receiver high on an, at an angle in the, on the corner route, and then when there's a guy on top or safety help, you pull him down, and it almost, as I mentioned earlier, becomes an out route. You having some old Southwest Conference flashbacks? Yeah, a little bit. That was that was a, a play we beat or used against University of Texas a lot, a lot. The Fussies on it. It is Stevenson doubling back, and he gets the yardage back. Ball comes springing out and pinballing away, and they blow it dead. They say he was down as Porter jumped on it. I mean, it looked like a pinball machine yeah. out there. Rolling on the field with the runner down. Second down. Got to have a little bit better ball security from Stevenson. He's a dynamic weapon with it in his hands, but he had a fumble last week that uh, went over to Tulane. They lost the fumble. This one, he's going to get lucky in the elbow. The forearm touches down. That was Zach Daw who wrapped him up, and he's talked extensively about how wrestling has made him the player and person he is, just going one-on-one -on -one against somebody, leverage and technique. And we saw him grasp the runner, Stevenson, who's much quicker there. Toon to the sideline incomplete. It'll be third and 16 for Clayton Toon. Yeah, we were talking about that yesterday. A flag yeah, so I ever, down. yeah, I think it was a little contact on Micah Harper after the play against on Kyle Porter. But I would I would always have wrestlers as offensive linemen and defensive linemen because guys could function in short areas, you know, takedowns. So you get you got to use your hands. So I would I'd recruit the heck out of guys that play football with a wrestling background. Uh, just at first blush here on the hit, I'm thinking Andre may be targeting here. We'll see what the officials say, but with that hit on Micah Harper, we'll check the marker and see if he led with the crown of his helmet. But just eyeballing it on the first hit, we'll see what they come up with on the contact from Harper to Porter. After the play was over, Unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense number 22. Oh, wow. That's his first wow. unsportsmanlike foul of the game. 15 yard penalty. The down counts. Second down. So they get maybe it on after, Porter. Yeah, maybe an after the lick by in retaliation to the Michael Micah Harper. Third down. Hit there, and then Kyle Porter. Oh, yeah. They just can't have that. The previous Cannot play is under it. further review to look at an aspect of targeting. Yeah, they're okay, so they are going to check on targeting. This will be third and 31, and a targeting check all to wrap up when we come back. Okay, so what you're looking for in terms of targeting here is forcible contact to the head or neck area, but this one is the crown of the helmet situation. So it's the question the is, helmet. if you have hit with the crown of your helmet and there has been an indicator of targeting, it does not matter where you hit. I mean, normally people hear forcible contact head or neck area. There's also the crown of the helmet rule, and if he led, Harper did with the crown of the helmet, 
that should be targeting. But then again, on the back side of this, Andre, Porter then comes up and with the crown of his helmet, headbutts Harper. And lunges to do it. So I don't know if it's, and it's not how much violence is inflicted. It's just a, if you're going by the code of the, of the rule, that one right there, there's a headbutt. So they're looking at both for targeting, and it's both the crown of the helmet rule, and I think that's the one, I've mentioned the other portion, because I think the crown of the helmet rule is the one you hear about less, but it does not matter where the contact is to with yeah. the crown of the helmet. And so if you're saying, well, he hit him in the chest or the sternum, wherever it is, that does not matter if there's an indicator of targeting and forcible contact with the crown of the helmet. We've been looking at this for a long time. And if well, they have two possible fouls, I'd be OK if they just played on and let both guys continue playing. But within the scope because it of looked the rule, like as Harper it's written, was, yeah, I, I get it. But it, it looked like Harper to me was leading with trying to go in with the shoulder and the head got involved. And then, of course, with Kyle Porter, the lunge and using his helmet in retaliation. I don't know how they're going to figure this one out. But both guys may, may be done for the night. Well, if you're Houston, if it's Porter that goes out, you're without a, a full-strength Mulba car. Now this one, it, I, I, to me, it, I, I don't love long replays, but this one makes sense. You have two fouls that you're dealing with ejecting a player, so you do want to get it right, although this has been a very lengthy review, Andre. There's also some question about the yard line, if it's one foul rather than two targeting fouls. So it's third and 31 if there are no further fouls called on the play. Hey, this long, it's like you're looking for something. <laughs> That's or there's an equipment there. malfunction. Like, it, it looks to me, the way he's playing with that pack there, it looks like there might be an equipment malfunction as well, which, I mean, I, I've had some great Friday nights historically, but watching equipment malfunction is top three. <laughs> So look, what you need to know if you're just joining us is we don't have cords and wires and knobs. We have two quarterbacks who are playing their hearts out. We have two possible targeting fouls here. And the first one is on Micah Harper, crown of the helmet After question. After further review, there was targeting on BYU number one. He is disqualified for the remainder of the game. That penalty will be enforced 15 yards, automatic first down. After the play was over, yard penalty by Houston will still be enforced but it will still be first down. So Harper is done, the freshman out of Chandler, Arizona. That is a targeting foul because he led with the crown of the helmet and there was an indicator of targeting, a thrust, a dive, something like that. Uh, to me though, Andre, if you're gonna call that one, an intentional headbutt with the crown of the helmet probably means you gotta go too. I agree, I agree totally with you. And, and uh, Kyle Porter kind of got a, breathe a sigh of relief because he easily could be headed to the locker room along with Micah Harper. So it's first down. The penalty moves them forward and then back 15 as Mulba Carr does check in and the screen is going to him. So Carr across the 45 and then some. It's a first down for Houston and Mulba Carr on a pitch count tonight as a first down. Yeah, that ankle injury that we talked about last week left the game and didn't return and got a BYU player it looks like maybe cramps injured player Kavika Fonua we'll check on him when we come back here's a look at the national championship trophy presented by dr pepper and we mentioned off the top of the show that byu has an outside shot at making the college football playoff they are four 
and O. Oh, they have a 23% chance to win out, according to FPI, 5% chance to make the college football playoff. And we asked Kalani Sitake directly about that, and he said, um, well, in 2020, I've learned to appreciate everything that's in front of me. I love coaching yeah. these guys. I appreciate them. And I don't mean to be glib or a jerk or anything like that. But he said, I, it's not something I'm thinking about. And I, some coaches say that and you're like, eh, I don't think he's telling the truth. I 100% well, believe him. At this point, they've got a, a tall order standing in front of them. And it's Clayton Toon to Jeremy Singleton. It's first down Houston, and Toon has been exceptional tonight. Yeah, Singleton, they really had a breakout season in 2019. 26 catches, 381 yards, and three touchdowns. They, are, they love getting the ball in his hands on shot plays. Unfortunately, tonight, he hadn't had many opportunities because BYU is just sitting in two deep zones. He is out of Brother Martin High School, the athletic powerhouse in New Orleans. As this is a run for Mulba Carr, who's got not much, maybe half a yard. And, and there's second the down coming up. There's a difference right there, Jason, in Mulba Carr and Kyle Porter. And Mulba Carr is a better lateral runner. He's better at stretch plays or getting to the outside. Kyle Porter is excellent between the tackles. So you're asking Mulba Carr to do something you know, that Kyle Porter is kind of specializes in. Porter's back in for the first time since that personal foul penalty moments ago on this drive, and Porter up the zipper sets up a third down and one and a half. There's my point. Right between the tackles, four-man front, you got a linebacker that's the fourth kind of standing up, so it's kind of easy to block. And uh, he can find holes in the middle, and he's tough to bring down. So they change up the tempo, and they speed it up for a first down to Porter once again. And Houston and Dana Holgerson, they should just can the first quarter for the rest of the year. Yeah, the thing about this is that now you've, you've found something with, with Porter between the tackles. Tune, sideline a little bit too much for Dell. Is forcing the look of BYU to change. And so now you when when you're effectively running the football, it's gonna put corners in situations like this. Keenan Ellis in one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside against Nathaniel Dale. Before it's always safety help over the, the top. Now you're getting some looks with single safeties, and that's gonna bring these outside receivers to the party with one of BYU's cover corners out of the ball game, Harper with the targeting in a quarter when Houston has had the ball for a substantial amount of time. They may go right back to Dell at the top. Toon scanning. He bails out that direction. Toon uncorks to the sideline. And this is brought in. Oh, wow. Bryson Smith. What a play. Kind of atoning for that fair catch at the one yard line. Nice job with the, all you, all it takes is one foot on this level. The previous play is under further review. Yeah, take Moving a look at it, but I think he tapped it down. 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 That's a heck of a play, a heck of a catch. And he completed the catch. He came down to the ground. The ball was in full control. And that looks like a pretty easy fish in a barrel catch right there for Bryson so Smith. Too. It's just a question of did the toe actually tap down or did it drift to the white portion of the out of bounds mark remember the ruling on the field was that it was indeed a catch and I don't see where there's anything that makes you think he didn't tap the foot down oh, that's inbounds let's play and he has control of the ball at that time he has command of the ball watch when he pulls it in and where the ball is when the toe taps that's the only thing they yes. could be looking at yeah he's yeah, he's got control let's of the ball let's play ball well, he sticks it right in the in his stomach and rolls and to make sure that the ground doesn't 
kind of jar it out. It's a heck of a play. Yeah, that's After not easy at all. Review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down. Beautiful play. So Dana Holgerson now knows that if you have Bryson Smith's feet on a line, you want it to be the sideline and not the goal line. We've learned that tonight so far for Houston. <laughs> Houston already has its second 90-yard drive of the night. Can they add on from 90 as Porter is down around the five? Got to be impressed with this offensive line of U of H at this point in the game, getting tremendous push, providing time for Clayton Toon to throw, the, throw and push the ball down the field. And then when he's getting flushed at times, He's still been accurate on the move. This is a 16 play drive eating up nearly half the quarter. Toon spinning. Toon steps up. Toon, oh, did he? What a run. Come on. What a play. I mean, there was a, a defender that had him dead to rights in the backfield, and he's able to spin out of it, make one miss, and then launch himself into the end zone. I'm telling you, he has taken this quarterback. I don't, want to, I don't know if you want to call it competition or the hype that Zach Wilson brought in to this stadium tonight. He's taking it personally. And you can see it through his play. They will go for two very early with 18 minutes plus to go. Boy, just inviting for a quarterback draw. He wants the left side, and it is intercepted. Picked off by Udo. Here's a touchdown again. Just watch him make the first defender miss on a blitz. It's Uda that he makes miss, and Max Tooley along the way as well. Gets him to go outside, he cuts inside, and then the, the launch and the dive for the end zone. It's a heck of a play. Here's the two. But, but Andre... Remember we asked Clayton Toon, hey, what's the worst pun that people have made about your name with the last name Toon? He said, I don't know about pun or joke, but people always call me Tommy Toon, and yeah. I don't know who Tommy Toon is. Well, Clayton, Tommy Toon was a choreographer in his heyday, and Tommy Toon would love that dance step you just did to get into the end zone. So now you know. With all the pressure, right now sitting on the BYU sideline. It's the big cloud of pressure sitting over the guy's sideline with the white jerseys on to make something happen as we get later into this game. We wonder if chasing the points was a good idea. We'll find out. 26-14, tonight's timely delivery brought to you by the fine folks at DoorDash. 99 yards. Yeah, uh, did it. Work in the edges of the defense. On the move. You see there, big pass to, to Smith. And then this dynamic run to get himself into the end zone to extend a lead. Andre, when was the last time you saw a college football quarter that had two possessions take up 12 minutes? <laughs> Been a long time. Zach Wilson, your serve. First down across the 40-yard line, down the sideline. He's got Pauu. Well, and the way U of H is operating, it's almost going to take a score here. They've got to find a way to get themselves not only just a field goal, but back into the end zone because defensively you haven't been able to stop the U of H from moving the football. Wilson under pressure coming from Logan Hall. He goes to the sideline and he's got the big guy with the hurdle again, Mason Wake. He's well known for it and he goes high once more. 
Boy, I tell you what, just the ability to get this ball off. Watch the launch angle from his arm. Just from his side. It's a quick flick of the wrist. And then Wake on the tail end of it. Make sure you secure the ball, big fella. Look, Mason Wake, people have asked him, why do you hurdle people all the time? You're 6'1", 250. He says, I've always been a big kid, and all these little guys are gunning for my legs. So I had to learn early on how to jump over people. <laughs> Mason Wake, 6'1", 250, had a couple of touchdowns against Troy. He didn't see the ball a lot as a freshman, and he went right over the injured party, Peyton Turner, who is as vocal of a player as right. anybody and as talented of a player as anybody on that Houston defensive sideline. He came in with two sacks last week, four and a half tackles for loss. And here's a young man who already has had a major knee injury as a high school senior. And good news that he'll come off under his own power. He is some physically gifted player that this coaching staff, they expect to see him playing on Sundays in the NFL. Got great size at 6'6", 270, could add some weight. Got an excellent pass rusher, and he can chase you down. Quick injury report from Chris on the sideline for BYU. Yeah, Gunnar Romney has been in and out of the medical tent, nursing a right hamstring. He's currently out, but does not have his helmet with him. Chris, thank you. So without Romney, Wilson to Dex Milne and inside the five first and goal BYU just as the game started Wilson to Milne well they will show you that they can match how you play against Navy everyone knows that Navy is a running team well BYU surpassed them in that category then Troy comes to town throwing the football around they were able to throw it with Troy and it was a kind of a mix with Louisiana Tech so I say all that to say if you get in a you want to shoot out they will do that with you, and they can move it up and down the field, and that's even without Gunnar Romney, one of their better receivers, and certainly the deep threat in this offense. Mill in motion. Wilson is stopped. Olivier Charles-Pierre with that tackle, and it's second and goal. Yeah, I think Peyton Turner was back in the ball game again, so it was a quick healing of the cramp that he had the, a couple of plays ago and he got himself right back in the game to help stop Zach Wilson. Shows you just how important big number 98 is to this defense. Second and goal. Quick hitter to Milne and he has goal eyes. Touchdown. And they love this play down near the goal line to Milne. And it's just a raise up, give it to him while he's in motion, and he just turns to get himself into the end zone. His momentum is enough to get him across the goal line. But right back in this thing comes Zach Wilson with a touchdown pass to Dax Milne. Dax Milne, the roommate of Zach Wilson, Milne, whose father, played double-A baseball with MLB Union Chief Tony Clark back in the day in the Tigers organization. Makes it a 26-21 score. Chris Button, Dax Milne, Zach Wilson, Braden Cosper. They're a sitcom. <laughs> they are. They've known each other since they were 10 years old, but Dax and Zach were competing against each other in football and basketball and track. Even Zach Wilson will say, hey, Dax got me on the track, but I think I could get him now. Eventually, they joined up on basketball teams, so competitors then became close friends, now roommates, as you said, with Braden Cosper. I will say that there's a competition of who's cleaner or who's more organized. That obviously goes to the quarterbacks, right? The other two uh, get in a fight over not making their beds. Well, yeah, I mean, Zach Wilson told us, I'm like both of their dads. Neither of them like to make their beds. And so he's the clean one. And look, uh, it, you know how it is when you have a relationship with your receivers, Andre. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, there's always competition between those guys. And 
quarterback receiver competition. Oh boy. And they're going to onside kick it. BYU will take out the special teams tricks as much as any team in the country, and they get the ball back. Outrageous. They caught, they caught U of H sleeping a little bit. Everybody was set for a return, and you watch the front line start to go back. The ball's not with 11 yards. BYU recovers legally. Foot down. Nobody there to even make an effort to recover it. Everybody was in retreat to go back and block on the return. It was Talmadge wow. Gunther who came up with it for BYU. Riverboat Kalani. <laughs> Look, Kalani Sitake is a mild-mannered guy. He is very soft-spoken, but oh. he will get after it in creativity. Wilson, Dax Milne one more time across the 45, and here was the celebration in the BYU locker room when the athletic director had an extend Kalani shirt under his jacket. This is the big celebration from last year when they knew that their head coach was coming back for a long time. I just wish everybody could really hear his message. They should hear his message. Because he's, he's truly living a dream by being the head coach at BYU. Tyler Algier off the screen. Little soft shoe down the sideline and out of bounds right near the marker again. Boy, the arm angle on this throw to squeeze it into Tyler Algier. I mean, he lets the rush get to him, and then all of a sudden it's just a quick sidearm kind of flick to get it just past the defenders. It doesn't have to, you don't have to be, you know, squared up, That's everything, him. just get it to him somehow, some way. You can tell he's watched a mixture of a lot of quarterbacks. This yes, is a well-prepared young man who's got a lot in his bag of tricks, but so does Houston. Toon versus Wilson. Houston, BYU, 15 minutes of fun remaining. We've had a fair catch at the one, and we've had Houston with two 90-plus yard touchdown drives for the first time since the Case Keenum era in one game. And we have 15 minutes left. Here we go. Zach Wilson off the scoop for Algier on a first down. And these quarterbacks, you were talking about it during the break, Andre. The quarterback yeah. ratings are gargantuan. It's, it's unbelievable. I think we had 10 incompletions all game between both guys. 20 of 24 for 307 for Clayton Toon, and then 20 of 26 for 332, and two, both guys have thrown thrown two touchdown passes. That's for Zach Wilson. So you, you get, you're getting your money's worth with these two guys. And they're making quick decisions, both of them. Average time before the throw tonight, under three seconds for each of them. Wilson, quick release this time. And this is down on the deck. And it'll be third down. He was looking for Cosper. Cosper, his other roommate. To the other side, filling in for Gunnar Romney, who Chris told us was out with a hamstring, taking his helmet from him. So he's unlikely to, to come back in this game, and he's going to have to do it with Pau, Milne, and now Cosper. How much pressure does Houston bring? They dial it up. Here they come. Five of them. Backpedaling. Wilson gets hit. And he gets dropped. Houston got there. And the sack for Anini. The end. Anini is a pass rush specialist. A speed rusher that can certainly get after you. And he's actually showing some power working against Brady Christensen. The left tackle for BYU. But undersized is 6'3", 240. And he's just beat a guy 6'6", 300. So two sacks allowed for this very, very, very confident offensive line and old offensive line and together offensive line. But they're out of field goal range now. And they'll let the clock run down to zero and take the five-yard penalty. So basically, kicking to five-yard penalty, still fourth down. 
you're saying no harm, no foul on the onside kick. They're able to, the defense able to rally. And how about Joe Cotton? Dialing it up at the right time, bringing an extra linebacker. They just brought five, but they were able to get home and affect Zach Wilson. Yeah, there has been um, a lot of tomfoolery tonight, Andre, but not here on <laughs> fourth and 25, you wouldn't no, imagine. Punt this one and play defense. And the last time they were in this situation, it was down to inside the one yard, right around the one yard line. I think they just caught another delay. I think they're wanting the delays to try to land one inside the 10. Quick traffic and weather update. Delays continue. We are in set for a fantastic Delay finish here. Kicking team. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. Yeah, this is, I say this all the time, but I would decline these. Because you're, you, all you're trying to do is get room for your punter. Make him punt it from the spot that he's trying to get the penalty yardage from. Rico finally does put toe to leather. And this will bound. And a really nice punt from Rico inside the 10 yard line. So Houston already has two 90 plus yard touchdown drives. They'll try and do it again tomorrow. Jimbo Fisher and the Aggies on the road in Stark Vegas to take on Mike Leach and Mississippi State in the air raid. Four Eastern, three Central on ESPN and the ESPN app. Uh, like other Kellen national storylines going on right now. Big postponements this week. Oklahoma State, Baylor, Cincinnati and Tulsa, LSU and Florida. Nick Saban still may coach for Alabama. He would need three consecutive negative tests, all spaced out by 24 hours or more after his positive test on Wednesday. And then Trevor Lawrence and Clemson facing Georgia Tech. We had Georgia Tech last week, Andre. Jeff Collins has a lot of spirit in that team. They might be undermanned, but I don't know if they're going to get beat by 27. You? No, no they'll, they'll fight to the finish in that one. Clemson, though, is... They're on another level when it comes to college football right now after watching them last week. Clayton tuned to the sideline and a flag comes down. Chris Wilcox on the coverage against Singleton. I think this may be offensive pass interference on Singleton coming up the going over the back of Chris Wilcox. Wilcox is a an excellent cover man, team's best cover man. Pass interference. Offense. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat second down. Now this is a time if you're BYU to to bring some pressure. When you have U of H pinned back like this. So that's perfect coverage right there. Step for that's step. That's a good call. And, and his his only uh, shortcoming has been he's he's been injured the last couple of years. Second down for Toon. Pressure coming. He steps up in the pocket. Toon on the run, and he dives with another marker coming in. And it's in the area of holding. Hope. It's number 76. Half the list is to the goal. Repeat second down. And it's not, it has been a less than desirable night for Patrick Paul. He's pulled at one point in this game for Yaniji, Ruben Yaniji at left tackle. Yeah, he locked him up that pretty good. Kind of obvious, isn't it? Yeah, you're not you're not fooling anybody there. That's not happening. Second and 14. The passing plays had not worked, so Porter runs it. Andre Clayton tune tonight has 12 completions on passes thrown 10 yards or more downfield. He had never had nine in a game in his career. He's been really successful intermediate. The receivers like Keith Corbin running ex excellent routes, and he's hitting. He's been money in terms of accuracy. Tune. Incomplete. Some contact with Troy Warner, who's celebrating as though he's a statue. 
to be placed on a mantle. Fourth down. <laughs> and that's the stop that BYU needed. Had him backed up. Excellent punt. You're playing complimentary football at this point, so you're taking advantage of a play made by the special teams in your punter and the defense able to get off the field and really flip the field in the offense's uh, favor here. They're going to have some pretty good field position with any type of return. 26-year-old Aussie Lane Wilkins on the punt. And that is not a good punt. However, it does fit the special teams we've seen and the oddness and the eccentricity so far tonight. How's this one going to finish in lovely Houston? We don't know and you don't know. That's why you stay. Welcome back. Five point game here in Houston and the Cougars defensive line for Houston is known for being a group that likes to trash talk well, over on the sidelines. They were all bragging and laughing about being able to get BYU's offense off the field when defensive line coach Brian Early came over and said now is not the time to be caught up in your feelings. The uh, the trash talking and the celebrating quickly shushed. Yeah, no, no, no getting caught up in your feelings, Andre. It's 26-21. Let's go here. Yeah, and your punter just puts you against your backs against the wall with a 13-yard punt, and they're already close to the red zone. So we need you to, you know, to do something special here to hold BYU to just a field goal attempt. And for BYU, they've got to take advantage of this type of field position. Take a shot here, maybe. They'll spin it back to Milne. Dax Milne is down to the 10-yard line. First down and goal, BYU. Boy, and basically, they're just playing left-handed. Without Gunnar Romney on the field, it's been Dax Milne the better part of the second half of this game. And he just has such a feel for running those screens and little quick hitters to get himself the football and not only the football but yards after the catch first down run it'll be second down and goal what kind of call do you like here for Wilson in this offense I'd get him on the move again maybe you know show it underneath to Algier and then get him on the outside to put pressure on the edges of this Cougar defense now they've got to be careful with it as well because they've been coming. The pressure has been coming from outside in. But if you can get somebody hooked and get him on the outside, well, it could be dangerous. That's Algier in motion into the backfield. Wilson, little shovel pass and wakes in. Touchdown, Mason Wake. What a play call by Jeff Grimes. Hey, he fooled everybody in the house, including the old quarterback over here. Boy, that's that's sweet. That, that almost looks right out of the Kansas City Chiefs playbook from Patrick Mahomes. There was a shovel pass kind of underneath in the same manner about two weeks ago. Well, look, we talked about this. They're going to go for two. Zach Wilson told us with great poise that he added arm angles because it adds throws and things for the defense to look at. It's almost like a pitcher cha changing his arm slot. And there he did it again to great success as Algier reaches wow. for two. And BYU has a three-point lead with ten and a half to go. Well, there's another check for the NFL scouts. Can the kid throw with pressure in his face? Is he accurate with pressure in his face? And he had a guy breathing right down his neck when he shot that one in the, into the arms of, of Tyler Algier. So Houston chased the points in the third quarter, didn't get it. BYU hits for two here and a three-point lead for undefeated BYU. Mahomes stuff here for Wilson. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, this is the same play call that Mahomes hit his fullback on, and then all of a sudden they put this in. Zach Wilson hits Mason Wake on the same exact play 
Boy, you talk about a copycat sport. <laughs> Football is it. You find something good that you've got the personnel to run it, coaches will find a way to put it into the playbook and implement it into the game plan. They ran Tyreek Hill in motion. This was Algier in motion for BYU. And yeah. it was the same arm angle. I mean, it's the same play. And this is where the study that we've been talking about all night from Zach Wilson, you can install something like that when you know somebody's a high-level thinker like this young quarterback is. I mean, same arm angle, almost an underhand right-hand shovel, shovel pass. Hey, this season for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate makes a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate is a combination of Joe Burrow and Aaron Rodgers and Drew Brees and all of that. But Clayton Toon on the other side from Zach Wilson has been tremendous tonight, Andre. He has, and now the ball's in his hand with an opportunity to lead his group. Oh boy. And he nearly got it picked off. Peyton Wilgar was spinning down for the ball. Wilgar was in place earlier when Zach Daw got his hands on the ball and there just read the eyes of Clayton Toon. Took him right to the football and almost came up with a big turnover. Wilgar, whose father Dana wore the same jerseys that they're wearing tonight back in the 70s as this is a ball to the sideline and Wilcox this time no flag against Singleton. Boy, and where, whereas the University of Houston turned it over a bunch last week against Tulane. They've been able to stay away from it. Turn or turnovers tonight. And on two consecutive plays, we've had some close calls. Yeah, no turnovers each way. We've seen some field position flipping, but not on turnovers. As Houston's been outstanding on third down. Seven for 11. Oh this boy. time he snowed under. And the Zach big Daw from, got in there. From the outside, Jay's excellent pass rusher. When they line him up on the end of the line of scrimmage, they run a little twist charge where he comes inside, sets the, the blocks up outside, comes underneath, and he ends up right in the chest of Clayton Toon. And now they need, the Houston Cougars need a better punt from Lane Wilkins, who last time went 13 yards only. This one to the 46, and a fair catch for Mill. A UFC fight night is tomorrow from Fight Island in Abu Dhabi. Brian Ortega, second-ranked featherweight contender against the Korean Zombie, the number four contender in what should be a highly action-packed main event. Prelims start 4 Eastern time, main card at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN Plus in both English and Spanish. And to get ESPN Plus, go to ESPNPlus.com or download the ESPN app. Andre, I feel like we should take a crew vacation to Fight Island after the pandemic is over. <laughs> no, is there, there are a lot of fights on tomorrow. It's got to pick what you like. Late mesh there, and they will get not much. Algier on the run, second down. How clever do you think Jeff Grimes gets on this drive with under 10 to go? I don't think we're going to see anything uh, that comes in the form of his definition of trick plays, which are specials. He will try to keep it on the ground as he did there. Maybe some play action from a, from that type of look to get the ball out quickly. But something safe. And it looks like Houston playing zone right here. He's got the, the bottom receiver in the slot open already. Zach Wilson has been awesome against zones so far this year in the four games. And he makes a good decision for Keanu Hill that time right around where the marker is. And that's where exactly he went with the football to the slot. Sometimes you, you overcomplicate the game. It's just who's uncovered, who can I get to quickly, and who's sure-handed. And give them the football. Now, X down and one to go has been difficult for BYU tonight. They really tighten things up again. I would stay spread out trying to run the, the football against the Cougars. Algier puts the head down, he's there. not going to get there. Andre, same deal. 
I don't understand it. I mean, Jeff Grimes has had a tremendous amount of success with Algier when the formation is spread out. Three wide receivers, one back. Let your offensive line take care of things. When you condense it down, now you bring all those jerseys, all those bodies. You got to account for one guy slips a block and the whole thing is blown up. So what do you do here? Do you go for it fourth and two? Ooh, they're going to punt. They're punting away here. Defense has stopped the Cougars the last couple of possessions, so maybe that's where Kalani is, is leaning on. Rico sends it high in the air and into the end zone. So a touchback for Rico. The stop for Houston gets him the ball back from the 20 when we come back. ESPN College Football is presented by Ram, built to serve. I thought we forgot one for a second there. No, there he, there he is. We didn't get to see your hairdo though with my fade going on. Hey, there, I'm in the house, man. It. Couple, a couple of pictures in the house. Sweet. How many cutouts you got? You got a whole section of Andre wears. That's ridiculous. Quick throw, oh, no, and got to catch that one. Got to catch that one, Kyle. He, right out of the backfield, he can't, couldn't have been thrown any better, and that's what I'm telling him on the way back to the huddle. We got to have that one. That's a young fellow like there, that. with that a is... true flat top. <laughs> wow, how many are you? <laughs> They're like 12. You got a whole Brady how bunch of Andre Wears. There are 11 of them. That's awesome. They love you down there. That's great. Leighton Toon, rush coming, he swerves by it, and Toon is just short of the line to gain. It'll be third down and one. Tofa was in there first, and he slid by it. Well, he has been magical when pressure has appeared to get himself out of harm's way and then turn a negative play into a positive one. Obviously, the touchdown run he had. All right, so there's the spread on third and one. You were talking about it from BYU's vantage point. Houston Vegas goes. Certainly run Kyle Porter right here. Now they use Toon walking up to the line, and they got a first down for Houston. So even just that, right? I mean, that's a yeah. different look. A little, a little window dressing to make you think, hey, we're thinking about throwing it, and I'm going to approach the line of scrimmage as if I'm going to change the play and quick snap it. Nice heads Injured up play player for Houston. That's Patrick Paul. Tough day for him. He's down and hurt. We will step aside and check on Paul when we come back. BYU and Houston, both teams undefeated. BYU 4-0, Houston 1-0. And these quarterbacks, Andre, uh, what do you make of them tonight? Well, we started. They were the story coming into the game. Obviously with Zach Wilson coming to town and Clayton Toon put his name right in the thick of it, right in the mix. Both have played superb games. Hey, look at the stats. I mean, just unreal. Under seven to go. This is Porter and he can't bounce it outside. What a game for Zach Daw. Tofu was in there too. Yeah, Tofu was being blocked and it got himself involved in the play. And you don't want to have any negative yards in your march to take the lead in this one. Or at, at the very least, tie it up. They told Clayton Toon, don't get greedy, don't try to be Superman. He's got six minutes to do what he needs to as he bails this time out to the right and he's dragged down by Udo nicely done by the sophomore DB Udo is a fantastic athlete who ran 10 9 in the 100 meters his senior year high jump 6 4 in high school so you're talking about a superb athlete on the back end and just a sophomore so he's going to be around a while 
How much heat will BYU bring on two? None. They're going to plant their feet at that down and distance marker and not let anything behind them. They came with four, and Toon stumbles ahead. Kafusi spikes him down, and it's fourth down for Houston. You wouldn't think about going for it here, would you? No, you're, you're going to rely on your defense that has played some fantastic football the last couple of drives, with the exception of giving up the touchdown drive. But punt and play defense. BYU 4-0. Their last unbeaten season was 1984 under LaBelle Edwards. And certainly that's a long way down the road. But that's what they're playing for, and the ball's on the deck. There's a flag down. Now, did they give Milne enough of an opportunity to no. make the catch is the question. And I agree with you. I think the answer is no. We'll see what happens at the bottom of the pile. I think he came out with it. May have come out with it anyway, but... It's definitely going to be, he's going to, he was interfered with. Kick catching interference, kicking team number 17, 15 yard penalty. First down. And it's, you know, a big penalty here at the end of it. Fair catch. It's the width of the receiver's shoulders and one yeah. yard in front of him. And this is absolutely a breach of that. Don't you think? I mean, he's right there in his face. I mean, right there, so. Not sure who came up with the football. It looks like Milton may have come up with it anyway, but big 15-yard penalty is going to give BYU excellent field position to start this drive. Under five to go. Wilson decisively up the middle. First down and more for Zach Wilson. When you get everybody thinking pass rush, I got to get to the quarterback, and you slip Zach Wilson underneath on a quarterback draw. That's genius, Jeff Grimes. Jeff Grimes told us there are some times on tape he looks at Zach Wilson, he's about to stop the tape to say, don't do and then he stops himself because the kid is so clever with his arm angles and his decision making that he'd rather just let him play as Wilson wants to throw the screen and he puts that one in the ground outside oh, the numbers and second down. Yeah, excellent read by Williams, the corner to that side. Just kind of sniffed things out. He's had a nice ball game. He's played a nice ball game for this Cougar defense. He's their boundary corner. You're going to have your force to make a lot of tackles. You got to be tough when you're playing the boundary corner because you're going to be involved in a lot of run defense. What a start to our college football weekend on Friday night. Some big games tomorrow as Wilson throws, and he's got a first down. All the way downfield to Isaac Rex, the freshman tight end inside the red zone. Bought himself some time and allowed Isaac Rex to clear. And throws him an absolute strike. And now BYU trying to settle in to their four-minute offense. They've got a lead. Not pressured to score, but they want to work the clock. So you'll see Zach Wilson take the clock down around five seconds before he snaps the football. Three timeouts remaining for Houston. They've got to force at least a field goal here, you'd imagine, to have a chance. As Wilson loads up a cannon down the middle, and it scores free. Now the question is, did Pau have control? And the answer is no. Well, you talk about some trust. That's trust in your quarterback right there because anybody else in any other situation, you are running the football on first down. Great route to set it up by Pau, and he should have caught this one. This was a dime thrown in there nice and low away from the corner to where he can't get a hand on the football. You just got to gotta finish that one.
And they're going to stop it. Time Take a look out. at it. The previous play is under further review. Rolling on the field was an incomplete pass. Uh, now, we, Jason, we, is anybody else, any other coordinators thinking, let's work the clock, we're going to run the football and force the U of H to take the timeouts? Not BYU and not with Zach Wilson. They're going to push the gas and because they trust him. He's smart with the ball. He places it. That's fine placement right there. Away from the defender, low and inside. That's like net drills back at the University of Houston right there. Low and inside, high and away, high and behind, where you're just testing receivers, but you're working on accuracy because you're throwing to a point. And we would do net drills all after practice. I don't know if he Andre. held on to that long enough. Yeah, well, we've sat in officials meetings and replay seminars talking about this very specific play and it's always ambiguous in the end zone because you do need to complete the catch through the catch even in the end zone where possession for a runner is only yeah. simply with the nose of the football or a portion of the football across the line. I would imagine, based on what we've heard in those meetings, that this will be an incomplete pass. But BYU fans would not be wrong to make the argument that he's got control down to the ground with his knee down to finish the catch. Now, the question is, when is the catch finished? It looks like he had the catch on that angle. And then Jace Rogers comes in after he's on the ground with it already and is able to poke it out. The review, the ruling on the incomplete pass for second down. Yeah. There was yeah, one angle that brought it into question, but I think that's the right call. Yeah, and considering the complete the catch rule and he rolled into that, you're never going to likely see that overturned, especially if the call on the field was a touchdown then maybe it would stand but certainly not with the call on the field incomplete so second down you think they throw again I think they hand it off to Algier here get the clock started again another quick throw and it's incomplete for Dax Mill you don't see that much and that's just a bad throw by Zach Wilson he rushed it and it was just out in the front too far in front for Dax Mill. How much football do you think those two talk? You know, you got a roommate that's a quarterback and you're a receiver, and I bet you they're they're talking about plays and how to get open and where I'm gonna place the ball a bunch. You better believe it might come into play on third down and ten and movement from the right tackle and Blake Freeland. So a marker comes in. And it looks like a false start. False start. Offense number 71. Five yard penalty. Third down. It was first time he played offensive line was last year as a true freshman. It was a high school quarterback, and he goes about 6'8, 300 pounds. All state in basketball. Turned himself into a pretty good right tackle. You think screen here, Andre? Screen or draw? Oh, Wilson is going to uncork for the end wow. zone. And he drops it in beautifully. And it is his roommate, Dax Milne, on the touchdown. Oh, a parachute over the shoulder. Come on. pass for a touchdown. That's trust right there at the highest level, ladies and gentlemen. Because I can tell you about 99 out of 100 offensive coordinators will be running the football in this situation. But when you have one like Zach Wilson, you know, it changes the game. And you have total trust in him to make the right decision and two, that he's going to accurately deliver the football. And he did both in that case. First day of the season, he gets to play in front of his family, and he's been awesome. What a double move. They take advantage of the aggression of Damarion Williams. It took all the way to the fourth quarter 
for them to come back. Remember before the half, they threw the hitch route, got him to bite up. He runs a slant and go. And right out of the right on the money is Zach Wilson from a timing standpoint to get him to bite. The ball is in the air so that he makes the play. You said it. They talk a lot of football and they just use that almost telepathy to get their third touchdown hookup. Wilson 400 yards. And I go back to Chris's report from in the first half that Zach Wilson told us that on the plane yesterday, he watched cutups of individual defensive players yeah. for Houston. And he said to you about the aggressiveness of Demarion Williams, this yep. is a kid who thinks, and I know we've heaped a bunch of praise it's on him tonight. Level. He deserves it. You're right. I mean, you know it. You played at the next level. How special is his preparation for college it's, football? It's special because I specifically asked him, I said, give me a couple of defenders that you feel like you can take advantage of or what you've seen on film that could benefit you. And he pointed out Williams. He said he's aggressive. So right then I'm thinking double moves and I say it and he just starts to smile. And then he said, he pointed out Rogers, the other corner on the other side. He's small. So I'm thinking, okay, you're going to throw some, some lob shots at him. Yeah, yeah, we want to get our bigger receivers matched against Jace Rogers. And he's been money with what he, what he studied on film. He's brought it to the game field. Got the Agassi headband while you're at it as Clayton Toon goes to the sideline and Porter who's stacked up and BYU's defense lives for this. They'll give you five yards all day long. Yeah, they'll give it to you, but the thing about it is they're able to keep Porter in bounds. And so the clock's going to continue to run. Three timeouts remaining for Houston and Dana Holgerson. Toon spits it out wide, incomplete. He felt the heat coming in the walls, closing third and seven. Boy, this is where Tyler Batty really excels. I saw him against Louisiana Tech right before the half. They had Tonga on the bench. Batty was in, and he came up with two sacks in that game. Third and seven for Clayton Toon, and they delay draw it. Porter swarmed, and goodness, this thing is just about over. Keenan had it been Peely about with the stop. It's been about momentum, hadn't it, partner? When oh, Houston yeah. had the momentum, they were they did not take their foot off the gas. Now all of a sudden, it's shifted to BYU, and they are playing downhill now defensively. These two quarterbacks have been outstanding, top shelf tonight. But Toon, under duress again, is going to have to scramble for the game here to the sideline and knocked away. Keenan Ellis got in there, and BYU will take over. Well, it's the pressure. Is Zach Daw to get Clayton Toon off his, his launch point? To force him out of the pocket and then everybody else playing outside in defensively don't let them catch a ball and get out of bounds top down we're not going to get beat over the top a heck of a job defensively by BYU here late in the fourth quarter that's Udo on the sideline getting some Pats on the helmet, and the BYU sideline said, uh, Kalani Sitake said to us, we're just going to pretend everybody in the crowd is a BYU fan because, frankly, we haven't played in front of anybody all year long, and that's exactly what they're doing to the small contingent of Cougar fans from Provo who are there, and Houston's going to take one of its three timeouts with 146 to go. And following our game, Saturday morning, Sports Center. From L.A., it may actually be Saturday morning in L.A. By the time we're done with this, never know. Neil and Stan have it for you. ALCS, NLCS highlights, reactions and analysis. The Houston fans are happy with Dusty Baker's Astros. Georgia, Alabama, an all-time moment. And then a college football team primed to make a surprise playoff run. Maybe it's BYU, Andre.
I mean, look, they're going to go to 5-0 and if they win this game. They have Boise yeah. State and San Diego State remaining on a schedule as planned right now. And I know it's not a gauntlet of a schedule, but this is an impressive, cohesive team. Yes, I agree. And I, I think with the schedule, because of strength of schedule, New Year 6 is certainly on the table for BYU. And I thought this would serve pretty much as an eliminator game for both programs in that regard. Tyler Algier slicing down the middle for six. So fast, so powerful. And he played linebacker a year ago and had 26 tackles because they, did, they had depth problems on that side of the ball. So it shows you what kind of athlete and football player Tyler Algier is. This year, they needed him back at running back. He flips over and is having one heck of a season. Kalani Sitake has encouraged his team to dance like nobody's watching. Like they have headphones on and they're listening to music and nobody knows what they're doing. That is a spirited sideline right now for BYU. He'll get in there and dance a little bit himself, but watch this cut on a dime. Just straight up the field and then the speed when he sees the crease in the defense to get himself into the end zone. He was a linebacker last year, Tyler yeah. Algier, the leading rusher ever at Kaiser High School in Fontana, California, moved to linebacker. And his team now has the remaining schedule that doesn't look anything like they planned it, right? They had games at Stanford, at Arizona State, at Minnesota, Big Ten, Big 12, SEC, et cetera. Uh, that's not available for them anymore. And I would argue that they shouldn't get blamed for it. I know you're left with the schedule you have and the committee has to judge that. But if this team goes undefeated, they deserve to get paid off in in a requisite way for how well they've played and how they tried to schedule this year. Intent yeah, I agree. to schedule should matter this year. I agree. The Big Ten obviously getting started next week. The Pac-12, who is on that schedule, they get started the following week. And FPI right now, Andre, says Clemson's a 43% shot to go undefeated. We've seen Marshall this year, very good team. Yeah. Uh, BYU at 23%, and Oregon and USC uh, down there at 22 and 18. But look, if BYU goes undefeated, they're a bunch of one-loss teams. In a season like this, I, I say give credit to the group of five team. I, I really do, personally. I just don't think it's going to happen. I'm with you, but I, I'm on record as saying it's not going to happen. Uh, and I don't even know, I don't know that I look at BYU as a group five team. Yeah, I shouldn't say group of five, Andre. They're an independent, but yeah. they get treated, I but think, get like a group of five that. more than a power five. That's exactly right. They're somewhere in the middle, and I think consideration should be taken for, you know, for, for that. And, uh, you know, when you're trying to schedule a tough schedule like they had, and obviously with the pandemic, games are canceled, schedule has changed. I agree with you. Intent should be factored in. Houston's going to run it out here. BYU suddenly, I mean, Houston had a lead and BYU has rattled off 29 unanswered. BYU was up 14 to 3, Houston up 26-14 and that young man, Zach Wilson on the BYU sideline, where does he rank? in terms of impressive college quarterbacks that you've talked to in your time doing this, Andre? Talk to? Yeah. The, right at the top. Because it tells me when you're sitting down talking to him, everything he, he, he says makes sense. You hear guys and they scratch the surface with some of this stuff, but he's on another level. He is trying to get to a different place. Than, I mean, they all aspire to be NFL quarterbacks. But when you see the work that he puts in, the study that he puts in, and he's talented on top of that physically, boy, sky's the limit for Zach Wilson. His team wins 43-26. BYU goes to 5-0. Houston drops to 1-1. One and one. Hey, it is fun watching quarterbacks with you, partner. <laughs> it's a pretty, two pretty good ones tonight, that's for sure, my man.
Hey, Houston was game, by the way. Clayton Toon had a very nice night for himself and deserved better than a 17-point loss. But BYU wins 43-26. Enjoy college football over the weekend. For Chris Button, Andre Ware, I'm Jason Benetti for our entire crew. BYU wins 43-26 in Houston. Sports Center is now.